ओके डॉक्टर भद्रेश जी आई एम वेरी देयर ओके थैंक यू टू मैम जस्ट स्टार्ट ऑफ विद द टेक्निकल सेशन टेक्निकल सेशन 3 हेलो ओके जस्ट लेट मी गिव द वेलकम वेलकम नोट ओके ओके ओवर टू यू गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन to the second day of our international webinar and today we are having a, a series of presentation by reputed speakers and we are very glad that dr kakuli bhadra has accepted our invitation and joined uh, in the early in the morning so uh, uh, she would be introduced and uh, by dr sayed benazir firdaus and sayed benazir firdaus would be taking care of this session uh, and so i hand over the Uh, platform to Syed Benazir Firdaus uh, uh, to carry over the session from now on. Over to Syed Benazir Firdaus. Hello. Hello. It has been unmuted, Hello. my madam. Okay, Benazir, uh, just uh, ask. Um, uh, just uh, start off with the session. Hello. Hello. Ask madam to unmute. Benazir, please unmute. Hello. Hello. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, ma'am. I can yes, hear. Ben Benazir, please. Yeah, yes. please carry on with the session. Yes. Please carry on. Yes, it is my honor and pleasure to welcome uh, to this platform, Dr. Akuli Bhadra. Dr. Bhadra has completed her masters in zoology from Vishwabharati University. And later, she joined Indian Institute of Chemical Biology, Jaipur, Kolkata, as a GRF. After qualifying Net and Gate, she completed her PhD in the year 2008 and joined the same institute for her postdoctoral work. Uh, Dr. Bhadra then joined the Institute of Science, Bordhuman, as assistant professor of zoology, and thereafter she joined University of Bhutani in the year 2010, where she is continuing to stay. Dr. Bhadra's main research interests include nucleic acid small molecule interaction, biophysical and biological approaches, polymorphism in nucleic acids, binding and cytotoxicity of plant alkaloids, and in vivo in vitro cytotoxicity, insect plant association, and electroantennography. She has completed her research projects funded by CSIR, UGC, Government of India, DST West Bengal, and DST RFBR. Currently, she has three research fellows under her supervision and three PhD awardees. Uh, she has a number of publications in journals of international repute and more than one thousand two hundred citations to her credit. Recently, she has been awarded as distinguished researcher in drug designing and its biological evaluation research under Literal, Literal Access Awards Rule of two thousand nineteen by World Research Council and United Medical Council. Dr. Bhadra has presented her papers in several national and international conferences, both in India and abroad, and has been recognized as best presenter for her work. She is currently the life member of many professional societies. Today, she'll be delivering a lecture on anti-cancer efficacies of natural beta carbolin plant alkaloids. Welcome, Dr. Bhadra. Welcome to the platform. Thank you so much, Madam Fidos. Uh, for your nice introduction, uh, am I audible to all? Yes, very much. You are yes, audible. audible. Okay, so audible. can I share my slide? Yes, yes, ma'am. Continue, continue, continue sharing your slides. Is the slides uh, visible? Yes, ma'am, visible. Uh, yes, visible. Visible. Okay. So the slides are visible. So I am, I am audible also to you all. Uh, first, uh, very good morning to all of you. First, let me thanks the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity. to participate in this international uh, webinar thanks goes to dr uh, sinha for uh, accommodating me in this session 
Uh, since yesterday, uh, I was uh, attending, I attended uh, the various session of this uh, webinar and it was really a very interesting, uh, enlightening talk by the various uh, resource persons and rather I was a little hesitating uh, that uh, since, uh, as you can see, I am not from uh, Department of Botany, but my work is very much related to the plant source that is the alkaloid so <laughs> at least if you cannot accept me you can accept my work as i think so so uh, let me start my talk uh, so today i will share my research work my research experience uh, with anti-cancer efficacy of natural beta parboline plant alkaloids so uh, i think uh, it is known to you all uh, that next to terpenoids, it is the alkaloids which are one of the largest groups of plant secondary metabolites being present in several economically important plant families, which I don't want to uh, highlight here. Uh, the plant alkaloids, it is not only important for the human being or the mankind or other animals, it is also, it also acts as defense compounds in the plant, uh, being efficient against various pathogens, predators, and herbivores due to their toxicity. It is also just suggested that the alkaloids may serve as a storage form of nitrogen and act as protective agents against harmful effects of the UV light. And some of these natural compounds causes is the ability to specially bind to the various human receptors or targets and have a great potential to be used as pro-drug, especially diseases like cancer. And my interest lies here. So let me first give you an introductory uh, views about the structure of alkaloid. As you can see here, I have um, collected or I have jotted down structure of various alkaloids from various families from various groups so they are all plant extracted alkaloids the unique feature of these small molecules are that they should contain one nitrogen atom so that is the unique and special feature of this compound so accordingly uh, the because of the presence of this nitrogen atom, they are basic and uh, they are marked with physiological actions on different animals. So plant alkaloids constitute both taxonomically and chemically extremely varied group of compounds. And as a result, many different types of classifications are possible. And some classifications are even confusing also. So I am uh, highlighting only a few classifications which has been accepted uh, worldwide. Like uh, some alkaloids have been classified based on its classes, like it can be indole, it can be quinoline, it can be isoquinoline, it can be steroid and many more. My alkaloid, that is the beta carboline alkaloids, belong to this indole group. Not only this, some other uh, ways of classification is also there based, uh, which is connected with the family of plant species that they occur. But broadly, it is divided into two groups, heterocyclic or critical alkaloid, like nicotine, atropine, or my beta carboline alkaloid, barberine, windblasting, or it can even be non-heterocyclic or atypical alkaloid such as hordenine, colchicine, etc. I'm not going detail regarding this structure. So as you can see, mostly these alkaloids are all found or extracted from angiosperm plants, but there are few rare occurrences of these true alkaloids in lower plants also, uh, like pteridophytes and gymnosperms, and the very uh, known and FDA-approved alkaloid is the Taxol, that is taxol, which is uh, extracted or isolated from Taxus brevifloria. It's a pine plant. So there are some few uh, alkaloids which are also found in lower plants also. Now, uh, question arises is that 
what are the various target molecules of these alkaloids in the human system or in the animal system. So as we all know that protein, lipids, carbohydrates and nucleic acids, I have mentioned the percentage here, so a rough percentage which make up the majority of the cell's mass. And each one hello, is an important hello. Yeah, sorry to interrupt in between. Could you please, uh, please put it to presentation mode? Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Is it now okay? Yeah, perfectly fine, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, and uh, each one is an important component of the cell, performing wide array of functions. We all know it. Hence, these biomolecules have a broad range of applications in targeted drug delivery and has come to the forefront in recent years. People and number of workers are working on the various target biomolecules. So, uh, accordingly, I have enlisted uh, some of the uh, plant-based alve as well as some uh, microorganism-based and animal-based alkaloids where I have shown that they are targeting various biomolecules and like uh, nucleic acid, targeting the nucleic acid damage, targeting protein that is a very complicated uh, even target biomolecules like in some cases it targeted kinases, targeted apoptotic related biomarkers, targeting tubulin polymerizers, targeting transcription factors, heat shock proteins, uh, markers related to cancer drug resistance. It even has been reported to target carbohydrates and lipid metabolism. Yes, but one thing is that all these target biomolecules are related to the anti-cancer activity of these natural alkaloids, which are both plants as well as animal-based. So now, uh, actually, since the human body or an animal body is a complex system where the various signaling pathways are interwinked with each other, are interdependent on each other, so naturally, if a single alkaloid or a bio or a small molecule target uh, various or different biomolecules, it is always accepted. So naturally, uh, our aim or objective should be to select or isolate a small molecule in the form of alkaloid, which has got multiple signaling pathway targeting different biomolecules. So, uh, but as we can see, since I am working in cancer, so among different system or among different biomolecules, nucleic acid functionally serve as the principal cellular target, uh, especially in cancer. So now question arises, why all of us suddenly I have selected beta carbolin alkaloids? First reason is that it is widely distributed and coming to that point, it has been reported to intercalate into DNA. It has got various, various pharmacological properties. It interacts with benzodiazepine receptors and 5-hydroxy serotonin receptor. This is solely responsible, this is solely plays important role as hallucinating molecule. Actually, previously beta carbolin alkaloids has been reported to show a very uh, active uh, role in the hallucination rather than cancer. It has been reported to inhibit CDK, topoisomerase, monoamine oxidase. But our interest was that whether it showed any uh, anti-cancer effect on the various can cancer cell line or not. And that, was, that is the main objective of my study. So let me now introduce you all with some of the natural beta carbolin alkaloids. As you can see here, harmalon, harman, harmine, harmol, harmaline. These are few natural beta carbolin alkaloids among which we have been working on these three highlighted alkaloids, beta carbolin alkaloids as harmalol, harmine and harmaline. They are mainly isolated from plants like Preganum harmala and Manisteriopsis capi. None of these plants are found in our country. They are the native to either some Mediterranean region or some parts of South America. 
we have directly procured these natural compounds from sigma and we have not isolated. These compounds are either found or isolated from the flowers, from the flowering branches, from the seed coat or fruits. They belong to the family like Zygophilaceae and even other families are also there which I don't want to mention here. So our target will be these natural compounds and its targeted biomolecules. So accordingly, as I told you, my lab was engaged since last nine to 10 years, working with the various natural beta carbolin alkaloids like harmony. We have studied the targeting different motifs of nucleic acids and its therapeutic effect on HCT116, uh, which is a uh, colon cancer cell line. We have studied the effect of harmine, harmaline, and harmalon even on the serum albumin, human serum albumin protein to show its in vitro relationship between this protein and this natural beta carbonyl alkaloids. As well as we have studied the therapeutic effect of the harmalol on liver toxicity, its binding with the various DNA sequences, and its in vitro, in vitro and in vivo cytotoxicity on Hep G2 and other liver toxicity. So here today I will be in detail uh, with the therapeutic effect of harmalol. So accordingly, my study, uh, the objective will be, or the study headings, headlines will be divided into mainly three parts. It's binding study based on biophysical assay, in vitro study based on biochemical assay, and in vivo study uh, based on the histopathologic, histopathological and various biochemical assays. That will ultimately show or prove its therapeutic role of the alkaloid, harmalon. So, uh, we was in our lab who first reported that this alkaloid harmalol uh, is found to exist in two conformation form, structure one, which is the cationic form because of the presence of plasma charge here, a positive charge here, and the structure two, which is the decationic form where this positive charge is not found. How these two structures are can be uh, formed? based on the pH of the buffer media or the media where you can extract these or you can isolate or you can get this structural form in the media. We have concentrated with these cationic forms since this form was found to show a very good interaction with the biomolecules, whereas this decationic form doesn't show much strong binding with the biomolecules. Based on the absorbance and fluorescence emission, we could gray uh, or we could classify these two structural forms based on the pH values. Henceforth, I will deal with the cationic form or the structure one form of the harmalol and its interaction with the nucleic acid sequences. The first very uh, analysis that we did was a competition analysis. It is a very new, no more a new, uh, so many people are using now, uh, and a powerful and an effective tool for both quantitative as well as qualitative determination of the structural and sequence selectivity of the binding of small molecules, especially the alkaloids, to nucleic acids. Uh, we have selected various sequences like of thymus DNA, uh, DADT, Homo DADT sequences, hetero DADT sequences, homo GC sequences, hetero GC sequences, uh, double stranded RNA sequences, tRNA, poly A. But these structures were procured from the um, Sigma chemicals and hence it was 100%, 99.9% purified. So from this analysis, competition analysis, at single instance, we could make that this alkaloid harmonic showed a very good preference towards the GC sequence, uh, which was even um, given idea uh, that how it binds. That is, it gives a very quantitative idea about its binding constant. But again, uh, this quantitative value is not very much um, supportive. So better, we should go for some 
detailed quantitative determination of the binding constant of this alkaloid with these sequences. Hence, uh, we first concentrated on the absorption spectral uh, or UV uh, spectral changes of this harmalol after binding with the various sequences of the DNA, where it showed again the maximum binding with the uh, hetero GC sequences and uh, it showed both cooperative as well as non-cooperative binding. We have even uh, studied its binding constant with the steady state fluorescence emission spectra with the same sequences. And we have studied its circular dichroism, which gives an idea about the change in the helicity of the biomolecule, that is the DNA sequence, after it binds with the small molecule that is the alkaloid. As you can see, the various sequences uh, showed uh, various uh, order of binding, various types of binding, which can be uh, determined based on the formation of this extrinsic CD band, which can be even positive, or it can be even negative. Or even their change in the molar ellipticity, ellipticity also shows so all these changes show that various sequences gives uh, or bind differently with the small molecule. Because after this is, uh, we have, uh, we wanted to know how this small molecule rather bind to this nucleic acid structure. Now for your information, this kind of small molecule or alkaloid generally binds with non-covalent binding. And that is the advantageous point or uh, purpose of selecting this molecule as the anti-cancer agent because generally non-covalent binding uh, binded molecules show low toxicity. So non-covalent binding are of two types. It can be group binding, that is major group binding or minor group binding. Generally small molecules or alkaloids bind to the minor group and it can be even intercalation where it stacked between the DNA base pairs or even it can be between the two, that is partial intercalation, that some part of the molecule will remain outside the DNA base pair, while the some part will stack within the base pair. So this mode of binding was uh, studied with the help of viscometric analysis, which is also called as hydro hydrodynamic study and gel electrophoresis. But generally, I'm not going detail about the methodology. You can go through my paper publications where it is mentioned very, very detail. Here, generally, the DNA are sonicated or broken down into small pieces of around 140 to 160 nucleotide length, and they are uh, studied for its viscometry changes. And it was even compared with a classical intercalator, the EBM broken. And we have found that though it was not very close to the ethidium bromide, but it is not, it was overlying on the ethidium bromide curve, but it was very close to the ethidium bromide. That showed that probably this molecule showed partial intercalation depending on the uh, base sequences of the nucleic acid. We have also studied it with the parquet in DNA and with the ferrocyanide coaching, these are all various protocols to study the mode of binding of the small molecules uh, with the, especially the nucleic acid structures. We have also studied its gel electrophoresis with this PARC-18 DNA. Uh, after that, we have studied its uh, calorimetric uh, analysis by using ITC. It's uh, a very sophisticated uh, instrument. Many institutes in West Bengal, they have this instrument where they give a direct calculation of the various uh, thermodynamic parameters, including its binding constants, stoichiometry, free energy changes, entropy changes, and many more. So from here, we have again calculated its binding constant, its stoichiometric value, and we have uh, showed that most of the binding showed uh, exothermic binding, only one sequence, that is the HOMO-80 uh, sequence showed an uh, not an uh, exothermic, rather an endothermic binding. And the binding in all the cases were mostly enthalpic driven and entropically favored. So it was even, uh, we have even analyzed this interaction by molecular docking. This docking was done by my collaborator. This was followed by some in vitro study uh, by NTT assay on the various cancer cell line like HELA, um, cervix cancer cell line, breast cancer cell line, lung cancer cell line, and liver cancer cell line. 
and it was also compared with the normal cell line WRL16 from where we have shown that it is on the HEPG2 or the liver cancer cell line where this alkaloid has been found to show the maximum cytotoxicity with a GI50 value of 14.2 micromolar in compared with other cancer cells. Whereas on the normal cancer cell line, that is WRL68, uh, this alkaloid doesn't show any cytotoxicity even at higher concentration. We have um, uh, con we have continued till 55, it will be micro, not a millimolar. So uh, till 55 micromolar of concentration doesn't show any cytotoxicity on the normal cell line that is WRL. So henceforth, I will be dealing with uh, only the HEPG2, that is the liver cancer cell line, to show the further uh, in vitro biochemical assay. So we have studied the LDH assay. Uh, to show its percent necrotic and percent apoptotic, both this LDH assay is highly qualitative. So, uh, we have uh, followed with uh, double or dual staining technique by propadium iodide and annexing VFIPC, but it gave a very specific uh, value with percent apoptotic and percent uh, necrotic value uh, of the um, uh, alkaloid. Basically, what it happens, generally any natural molecule, uh, whether it is alkaloid or any other molecule, if it has been, or if you want to show its anti-cancer activity, it should show a very good apoptotic property. So, because apoptotic is the hallmark characteristic of cancer. So, naturally, uh, if the percent of apoptosis is more by the addition of this alkaloid, so it will be considered uh, as a very efficient molecule uh, because generally apoptotic, which is the plant program cell death in the normal system, cancer cell shows the death by either necrosis or any other process, but not with apoptosis. So naturally, if my molecule can uh, divert back the cancer cell to undergo the apoptotic pathway, so naturally it will be found to be very effective. So that is the main object. So my henceforth, my objective will be how far this molecule harmonol uh, at the various concentrations can induce apoptosis in the cancer cell line. So we have even studied uh, its same, that is the scanning electron microscopic images, uh, where it showed various other apoptotic features that uh, it was shrinking in size. It showed various cytoplasmic blebbing formation. So these are all apoptotic properties of the cell. Even we have studied uh, its chromo chromatin condensation by using happy staining, where it showed that the chromatin or the nucleus material was gradually shrinking. So that showed that the cell is showing apoptotic, apoptotic death. So this was the tip or the uh, transmission electron microscopic image of the FG2 cell, that is a liver cancer cell, and we did the same from the Ames, New Delhi, where it showed various uh, apoptotic properties like uh, nucleolus fragmentation, fragmented nucleolus are there, these are all new fragmented nucleolus, uh, it showed a cyto uh, sign of cytoplasmic blebbing, as we can see here, and its last stage of apoptosis is was followed by the formation of uh, phagolysosome formation, which was very prominent in the cytoplasmic region of the FG2 cells. We have even studied the single gel electrophoresis as well as the gel electrophoresis uh, from the extracted DNA from the cell, uh, from the cell line FG2 that give an idea about how the molecule harmonol uh, effects on the DNA or causing uh, damage of DNA in the cell. So as more the tail length of the uh, comet, as the comet tail as we call it as, more will be the person damage. And here, the more the formation of these ladder-like uh, formation of the DNA sequences, the more will be the damage. So hence we can say that our alkaloid is also affecting its DNA, causing damage in the cancer cell line. This was even uh, followed by some other uh, apoptotic properties like change in the mitochondrial potential 
uh, where the uh, potential was uh, increased uh, with the uh, addition of the harmalol. And we can see that the change of the stain uh, JC1 showed its uh, changes uh, or decrease in the mitochondrial potential in the cell line. So this is another very unique properties of uh, apoptosis as we can see in this Hg2 cell where because of the decrease in the mitochondrial membrane potential, this change in color of JC1 takes place. We have shown that, uh, we have shown even the cell inhibition stage uh, at the G2M because of the addition of harmalol in the Hg2 cell line. And we have also studied its uh, ROS dependent or ROS generation uh, that causes probably the apoptosis in this cancer cell line. So uh, we have also studied some more uh, uh, apoptotic foraparameters like uh, aspase 3, P53, which are said to be the unique and uh, very important characteristic of apoptosis for apoptotic biomarkers. And we have studied it with both RT-PCR as well as the immunocytochemical localization. This was followed uh, by uh, some in vivo study on the mice model, that is the uh, Swiss albino mice model, where we have uh, grouped uh, the mice into <coughs> various seven groups. And we have treated accordingly here that I have mentioned. And we have used then as well as then that is the diethyl uh, nitrosodamine along with CCL4, carbon tetrachloride, as the carcinogen to induce the hepatocellular toxicity or hepatocellular cancer, which is called as HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, and we try to show the post-treated harmalol effect on these mice model, on liver cell. So uh, this study was based on the uh, morphological feature or the morphological changes that uh, occur in the, in the liver. This is the controlled uh, liver and no treatment was done because the uh, liver condition by the treatment of both diethyl uh, nitrosoamine as well as CCL4. The purpose of adding uh, these two uh, carcinogens simultaneously is that in order to induce quick changes because they can induce the uh, hepatocellular carcinoma but using of CCL4 generally uh, promote or enhance its activity. So that is why it is always preferable to use both these carcinogens and this is the post treated condition of the liver after it was treated with the harmanol and uh, <clears throat> this is the various con uh, concentration in which it was added or it was used in this uh, mice model which I don't want to go into detail. Uh, these were some of the blood serum parameters uh, which was studied because of the uh, induce, uh, induction of this hepatocellular ca carcinoma by using DEN and CCL4. The various parameters used or uh, enzymes taken into consideration. These are all marker enzymes like alkaline phosphatase, uh, aspartate um, aminotransferase, uh, LDH, uh, LDH, lactose dehydrogenase, alanine aminotransferase. So this kind of uh, various um, uh, parameters or liver enzymes were considered. And in all the cases of various um, uh, liver marker enzymes, we can see that it is always in the dense CCL4 group that showed a very high estimated uh, concentration of these marker enzymes, which was quite reduced after the post treated condition in the harmony. So even uh, we have studied the person DNA, RNA and protein, protein degradation in the mice model and we can see that in both in the dense CCL4 condition all these biomolecular estimated concentration was reduced whereas this was regained in case of post-treated condition but one protein which is the alpha fetoprotein it's a very important marker protein which is generally reported in liver cancers and which has been found to be increased in dense CCL4 condition so with this uh, experiment, we could probably tell that probably this uh, carcinogen is inducing cancer like condition uh, in the mice model, which was taken control by the harmaloid treatment. So these are uh, some of the histological uh, parameters or histological structures, as you can see, uh, 
uh, after the treatment of uh, the uh, dense CL4 that showed a fibrolamellar carcinoma. It showed various cord pattern formation and many other uh, cancer-like properties like presence of sinusoidal spaces, uh, fibroid formation, and these architectural uh, deformation was taken good control by the addition of the thermalol in the mice model. So this is again uh, the same histological structure in detail I have shown uh, that after various how the changes take place uh, by adding uh, these uh, molecule or the alkaloid after various bits of treatment. So <clears throat> these are again the in vivo apoptotic uh, parameters or biomarkers uh, where we have taken consideration of caspase 3, P53 as well as cytochrome. These uh, markers were found to be uh, upgraded in the or upgradation of uh, uh, of these uh, biomarkers were observed uh, in the in vivo uh, cancer cells. Even we have studied the uh, in vivo ROS detection in the uh, hepatic cells. So in uh, short or schematically, uh, we can tell that basically this DNA CCL4, what it does, as such as never, it never cause any damage to the liver. But uh, this dihydrothyl nitrosamine and CCL4, when it is given or when it is taken uh, in the body, it is the cytochrome oxidase P440E1 enzyme which is already present in the liver in normal condition. They convert these uh, carcinogens into various active components. So it hydroxylates this step and it causes uh, this trichloromethyl compound into free radicals. And basically, these free radicals and this hydroxylated compound are the <coughs> basic component that is causing the cancerous effect or toxicity in the liver. So what it does, it causes liver damage by causing DNA adduct, uh, sorry, causes DNA damage by causing uh, DNA adduct formation. It causes liver injury, internal hemorrhage takes place. It causes ROS generation, which in turn causes stress, and as a result of which various specific enzymes are lit from the normal liver cells into the uh, cytotop, into the uh, other uh, system, elevating the level of various marker, liver marker enzymes that like ALP, LDH, bilirubin, and many more. So this is the basic condition that happened because of the intake of DNA and CCL4. And what my alkaloid or our alkaloid is doing? Taking of this alkaloid is probably uh, upgrading the various apoptotic parameters like P53, caspase 3 and cytochrome C and many other, maybe many other biological parameters which we have not studied. And probably because of this, it is inhibiting the hepatocellular carcinomic condition in the liver cell. So, uh, with this, I would like to conclude uh, that probably this harmalol, uh, because of its low cytotoxicity, is accepted. It is showing a very good binding with the nucleic acid, as, as I have shown by the various biophysical techniques. And it showed very good in vitro um, biochemical assays like ROS dependent, P53, and caspase activ activated cytotoxicity. Uh, it showed a very significant uh, inhibition of the cell cycle arrays. In addition to this, when we studied it uh, in vivo, in the in vivo model, it reduces hepatocellular foci, nodule, and carcinoma after the uh, DEN and CCL4 injection. So, this is the exact dose that we have used. That's why I have highlighted here. So, harmalol at a dose of about 90 milligram, it, is, it was observed in our cases, in our systems. 90 milligram per kg for nine weeks was given gradually. And uh, we have mentioned, we have maintained a calendar for its injection protocol, which is there in our paper, if you want to. If, you, if anyone is interested, I can share that protocol. Uh, sorry. That help to regenerate the parenchymal cells in the liver protecting the membrane integrity and thereby decreasing the liver 
leakage and proved to be an effective drug against hepatocarcinoma due to its non-toxic effect. So let's go back to square one, that is the significance of this kind of study with the help of its binding study, in vitro study, and in vivo study. Probably this will results contribute to the understanding of binding, specificity, energetics, and cytotoxicity of the alkaloid nucleic acid complexation that will probably help for developing better therapeutic agents in future. Now, our coming motto is that using this code structure, natural alkaloid beta carbolic molecule, we are working presently on the various analog compounds. This was uh, synthesized by my collaborator, Professor Valentine Nenas Venko from Moscow State University. And we are presently working uh, with these analog compounds. So with this, I would like to acknowledge CSIR, DST West Bengal, DST RAPR, and UGC Government of India for the funding and thanks to my research scholar Shorita, Parumita, Vishwanath, Aposh, and Udipto. The work was mainly done by Shorita, Parumita, and partly uh, by Aposh. Um, so they have all um, already uh, acquired their PhD degree. Uh, so I'm blessed with that. Thanks to all for your patience. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bhotra, for your nice and very picture. scientists come in us with high hope of the Madam, I cannot hear you properly. Is, uh, your voice is breaking. Yes, thank you, Dr. Bhotra. Thank you very much for your nice and picture. And uh, it is also a very good initiative on part of Dr. Siha who has brought people from different fields, not only from the field of botany in this webinar, to meet and uh, to share our research findings. Thank you, madam. Thank you. And your research findings really instill in us the hope that we can get future safe chemotherapeutic drugs from Mother Nature, which can be very low, or which can bear low toxicity burden. I would like to open this uh, session for some few quick questions from the audiences. If there are some few quick, quick questions from the audiences, please. There was one question I could see. Uh, how much efficacy does Harmalol uh, have against cancer cells? There was uh, a how, much, how much efficacy? Harmalol is having against cancer cells. Okay, okay. That's a very um, uh, prom like, uh, proper question. Uh, important question. Actually, uh, here I have worked uh, with the uh, Hep G2 cell line specially, where it has been found to be uh, very effective with a concentration of about 14.2 micromolar, uh, that is its uh, GI50 value. Uh, it has been not only found to be effective with the Hep G2 cell line, uh, with the other cancer cell line also, it has been found to be very effective, uh, where people have worked with some change in the functional group of this molecule and they have uh, reported even better therapeutic effect. So naturally the analog, synthetic analogs have been found to be rather more important. We cannot bang on these natural resources throughout our life. So naturally we have to think of some synthetic uh, molecule in future. So uh, this uh, harmalol, especially not only harmalol, this beta carbonin group has been found to be very much efficacious, especially against cancer especially against gastric related cancer oh okay okay thank you ma'am thank you 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 i cannot hear you okay you are not yeah now i can hear uh, we got a very clear picture of uh, Madam, uh, can you just write it down in the uh, uh, in this uh, notice form? I cannot hear you properly. It is breaking down. If you have any more question, can you please write it down in the chat box? Uh, 
हेलो मैम आर यू आर यू टू मी आर यू आर यू टू मी डॉक्टर मधुर यस यस या या आई थिंक डॉक्टर फिरदौस इज हैविंग सम टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम सो इश्यू विद अस डॉक्टर फिरदौस हेलो या बट वी कैन हार्डली हियर यू हेलो Uh, for your kind lecture and please be with us uh, throughout the session we are having some interesting lecture definitely definitely uh, as, and uh, thus um, uh, we are now moving on to the next uh, speaker as well as the next year person on the of the event and we are glad to have dr ak das with us uh, he is my teacher uh, during my graduation i am very fortunate that he has accepted uh, my invitation of being the chair person and we would also hear uh, him uh, later down the line Uh, so over to dr deshitas he uh, he is an associate professor and head of the department of botany bethune college we would be further introducing him uh, during his speech so i would like to ask dr ekedas to take over the session and carry on the session henceforth over to dr ekedas sir are you here with us yes 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 uh, please dr D dr das please okay yes, the thank you very much thank you uh, dr sina uh, for giving me this opportunity to take the chair of our technical session the first speaker of this session is uh, prof professor uh, shikhar pant uh, he is the assistant professor of department of botany school of bioscience and biotechnology bgsb university rajouri jammu and kashmir uh his area of specialization is uh, forest ecology forestics ethnobotany uh professor uh, pant uh is already awarded in the year of 2016 uh based on the best biodiversity conservation and management practice again he was awarded ah. in the same year the award was peral foundation oh, educational oh, excellence oh, award is attached with so many bodies both national and international level published a number of research papers in uh, journals both national and international report so uh, he will deliver uh, he is also a, a member of uh, eco ethics international union germany and also indian fund society chandigarh uh he will deliver a lecture today dry yielding plants of north western himalaya india and theft source of bio prospection the two words he has used in his uh lecture title i am very happy with the use of this term and theft that is source that is unexploited materials and the next one is bio prospection there is the possibility of that unexploited material that uh, is coming from the natural sources how can we exploit this natural materials uh, in different uh, purposes of our daily life whether it is agricultural field horticulture field uh, biotechnology etc etc so with this few words i welcome professor pan to deliver his international webinar lectures over to dr pan not edible your uh, uh, microphone is mute professor pan microphone is mute professor pan microphone yes 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 
thank you dr da dr ak das okay. chairman of this session for a wonderful introduction of mine i am just nothing i am just trying to <laughs> learn something from you all people a very good morning to all thank you dr sinha for giving me this opportunity to share my work and i am highly thankful to the head of the department of botany for organizing such type of event and provide all kind of support for this conference further i am also thankful to the coordinator organizing secretaries for their tireless efforts for organizing such an important event keeping in view the present scenario covid 19 pandemic the theme of the conference is directly or indirectly more relevant as far as the new opportunities or the role of plant world is concerned further the result or the outcome of the conference can be an option for the vocal for local or towards atmanirbhar bharat a dream of our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji my talk on dye yielding plants of northwestern himalaya and india and untapped source for bioprospection and i will be focusing on two aspects number one that is well known dye yielding plants of the himalayan region and the less known or untapped source for of untapped or less known dye yielding plants of northwestern himalayan region as we all know that color is one of the main element of the nature that made human life more aesthetic colors are directly and indirectly connected with our emotions festivals and qualities in the past human used to decorate their surroundings with the help of natural colors obtained either from the plants animals or some other sources like minerals since prehistoric times natural colors obtained from the indigo pomegranate hibiscus bamboo beet roots manjistha are widely used for various purposes either directly or in combination with the others further the natural colorants or the dye stuff are an essential fraction of non timber forest products that are widely used for coloring purposes in various industries and nowadays synthetic dyes are used as a coloring agent but due to their various environmental social and health problems people are now shifting from synthetic to coloring agents now the question comes that what is dye dye is a colored natural compound or a blend that may be utilized for imparting color to a substance like cloth paper plastic or other material dyes are the most imperative plant products as they are associated with our cultural beliefs various religious rituals crafts and also help in gratifying personal personification further they do not have any side effect and a play a vital role in cosmetic industries and also in other beauty products further the demand of natural dye or a green product is increasing day by day due to wide public awareness and no or less side effect in comparison to the other products the art of dyeing is as old as the civilization of human in addition to ajanta and elora if and wall paintings showed the effectiveness of dyeing craft that had been inherited 
from Indian ancient times. Atharveda, also contained of natural dyes, and Bhrigu Samhita is also written by means of natural dyes. The traces of color, gar color gar garments and the traces in the ruins of Mohanjodaro and Harappa also showed the presence of the dyeing technology at that particular time. Bible has also mentioned use of many natural dyes, including saffron. The period from classical ages up to the medieval period also acknowledged the tutorial capacity of number of natural substances. Melitus philippensis, Cecilpinia, Terminalia, beside these some black dyes were derived from the plant like Terminalia chibula, Umbilica, and indigo ferreting toria species. Further, the color fixation properties of alum was discovered, also discovered during the medieval period. Until the 19th century, all the fabrics were dyed with the use of natural products. Among these, indigo, tyrene purple, longwood are the most common and important dye products. On the other hand, nowadays market totally replaced the, uh, the natural dyes with synthetic dyes and synthetic dyes which are obtained from the low cost petroleum sources generally has easy dyeing superior fastness properties wide ability at a very low cost and have range of colors and shading these dyes have received faster acceptability due to its easing dye reproducibility and cost factor. With the advent of the synthetic dyes, there was a rapid decline in the use of natural dyes and later were completely replaced by the former ones. In spite of being dangerous to human health, having noxious, allergic and carcinogenic effect, synthetic dye now replaced the market and sliding the natural dyes largely because of tiresome extraction process from raw material, low color value and larger extraction time, which make them inferior than the synthetic dyes. But on the other hand, natural dyes are believed to be safe because of their non-toxic, non-carcinogenic and biodegradable nature. Moreover, India is to be considered as the foreigner in the art of natural dyeing, and it has a rich floristic wealth of approximately 4,90,000 plant species, including 17,500 NGOs. Nowadays, there is an increasing awareness of health and environmental hazards related to synthetic dyes. So the preference for the use of natural dyes is always there is there in society and at the same time the demand is increasing in international market also. In India, nearly 450 plant species are known to yield dyes and over 2000 pigments are synthesized from different plant parts, different parts of the plants. Out of these, ironically, only 50 texa and 150 pigments have been exploited commercially. The Himalayas has been a perennial source of attraction and challenges to the human intellect throughout the ages. In the Indian Himalayan region, the floral diversity was profusely used by local folk, local inhabitants for dyeing of wool and other purposes since decades. But the natural dye stuff manufacturers have concentrated only on only on few known taxa and the use of plant-based dye for coloring at commercial level is to an extent at an initial stage and dye yielding plants have not received considerable attention by the researchers also. Therefore, the study was aimed to document, discuss knowledge on known and newly source of dye yielding plants of Northwest Himalaya 
along with nativity, altitude, and other characteristics. For this, we selected northwestern and western Himalaya of Indian Himalayan region, which includes the part of Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, and Jammu and Kashmir. It occupies a strategic position in the Indian Himalayan region with a wide range of topography and climatic conditions from tropical to alpine or desertic zones, which supports unique, natural, and socio-economically diverse bio wealth. It has wide altitudinal, it has wide altitudinal ranges between 200 to 7,900 meters above mean sea level. The region is home to a large number of tribal groups like Bhotiyas, Tharu, Raji, Boksa, Jonsari in Uttarakhand, Gadis, Gujar, Bakarwals, and Pahadis in Himachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir, which are totally dependent on the various bio wealth for their day to day requirements or sustenance. The present work is the outcome of the COVID-19 pandemic. The present work is based on thorough screening of available data and literature on dye yielding plants, especially for the Northwestern and Western Himalaya of the Indian Himalayan region. Literature has been extracted from the internet or Google Scholar by using the different keywords related to the topic. Further, information on various aspects like altitude, life form, nativity was gathered from the various secondary sources or the published sources. Data was compiled and analyzed for the various parameters. Further, taxonomic validation was done with the help of the plant list or and the International Plant Name Index, IPNI. Plants has been utilized by man for different purposes since time immortal. Traditionally, a large number of plants have been used as dye producing plants or for dyeing purposes in the Indian Himalayan region. Despite the high value of these chemicals, or the high demand of these plants, low availability, very high, very few studies have been conducted so far in this region. Now come to the result section. Number one, species diversity. A total of 87 dye yielding plants belonging to 45 families and 74 genera have been recorded. And out of 87 plants, 38 herbs, 25 trees, 19 shrubs, and five climbers. Leguminaceae was the dominant family with eight species, followed by Asteraceae 6, Solanaceae, Amaranthaceae, Balsaminaceae, Euphorbiaceae, Polygonaceae, three species. As far as the altitudinal distribution are concerned, of the total species, maximum number of 48 species occurs with the altitudinal range between 1001 to 2000 meter above mean sea level. Come to the utilization pattern. The utilization pattern of the indicate uh, of the species indicated that leaves of 21 species, flowers of 18 species, fruits of 12 species, bark of 14 species, roots of 10 species, seed stem of five species were used for the extraction of dye, especially in the northwestern and western Himalayas of the Indian Himalayan region. Representativeness, rep nativity. Nativity is the first report of the origin or the place of the origin. And out of the total 87 species, 19 were native to the Indian Himalayan region, while 68 species were non-native. Most of the non-native species have their origin in Asia while some other species were native to Africa, South America, Euro, Europe, Europe, Eurasia, and other places. And now come to the well-known dye yielding plants of the Himalayan region. Out of 87 species, 
only 26 are well known as dye yielding plants and of the Indian Himalayan region and exploited commercially, which includes acacia, saffron, dasunia inermis, indigo fera, pomegranate, rubia mangista, melotus phalapensis, tegetus erecta, and balsam. Impatience species. <laughs> rest 61 species also use. Also, uh, rest 61 species are also used traditionally for coloring purposes on a very small scale and a very little information is available as far as their coloring properties are concerned. These are be termed as untapped source of dye yielding plants, especially from the northwestern and the western Himalaya. These include Acacia fistula, Hibiscus, Polygonum tinctorium, Woodfordia uh, fructicosa, Pinus roxburghi, Pyrus fascia, Pyrus armenica, and Pyrus persica. Come to the traditional ex extraction process. It involves three, especially from the Himalayan region, it involves three steps extraction of coloring matter from the plants, creating a bond between matter and fiber, and third one is dyeing properties. Here you can have a picture of traditional dyeing, especially in the Himalayan region, different processes from the Himalayan region. Moreover, both textile industry and textile consumers are more or more aware that need to develop and demand eco-friendly methods for textile. Further, the synthetic dyes are harmful both to the human and human health and to the environment and for their harmful effect are very well known. Consequently, taking into the account the side effects of synthetic dyes, there is a worldwide drive against the use of synthetic dyes. As a result, so many ecological, environmental, health and social problems, people are mo now moving toward natural dyes as they are eco-friendly and non-toxic in nature. Nat natural dyes offer significant options since they are safe for the use with at least health hazard, with the least health hazards, easy disposal, biodegradable, and the residue can be effectively utilized for making compost for agricultural purposes after the extraction of dyes. However, there are certain limitations of natural coloring dyes Number one, the lack of availability of sufficient material due to complex complexity of collection, volume, I, volume isolation of or bulk isolation of dye stuff is very difficult or very impossible. It's, it's impossible. Extraction process is complex and has not been standardized. Limited color range or shade, low fastness properties, and it is impossible to reproduce the same color again and again and again. Affinity of natural dyes towards cloth is very poor, and therefore we have to use some chemical or moderant that need required to increase their affinity. Although the present study was limited to northwestern and western Himalaya of the Indian Himalayan region, and its finding reveals that there is urgent need to develop an appropriate approach or action plan for the optimum utilization of the available dye stuff. Some principles here I am going to discuss which, upon which such a plan could be developed, which are as number one, it is necessary to have the complete documentation of the dye yielding plants together with their extraction process procedure availability and ethnobotanical practices should be carried out throughout the Indian Himalayan region. I'm not saying this is only for the Indian Himalayan region, but it implies for the other part of the India or the world. Sustainable methods for collecting different parts of the plant sh should be developed and disseminated to local inhabitants. Conservation and cultivation of the identified species will contribute to the continuous supply of the dye material and diversity rich areas or habitat should be identified and that need to be protected to ensure 
in situ conservation and continuous supply of the dye stuff, identification and development of some alternative sources such as fungi, microbe, with the help of biotechnological approaches. And also, we can use the biotechnological approaches to enhance or with the to enhance our the bioprospection of the available resources, use and promotion of state art of technologies such as ultrasonic energies for extraction of for the extraction purposes that will save the time as well as the plant bioresources. And the lastly, there is need to educate and awareness among the various stakeholders in the reason for the conservation of the species. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Stay home, stay safe, and follow the guidelines of an SOP issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs and Health Department. Because we stay in Corona stays out. Jai Hind, Jai Bhar. Thank you, Professor Pant, for uh such a beautiful uh webinar lectures uh professor pont has highlighted different aspects especially uh the dye yielding plants and he also mentioned the members of leguminosity its position is at the top so far uh the other uh species are concerned other families are concerned but I have a request uh, to Dr. Pond that he is doing a beautiful uh, job so far. The uh, uh, exploitation of uh, dye reading plant is concerned. I think he will encourage the junior scientist to come forward to perform the research work on this aspect to find out the new and new species of dialing plants and uh, that will definitely be new to our science and he has also highlighted different other aspects like documentation awareness academic aspects and different other things so uh, I, uh, I i convey my thanks to dr pong for uh, for delivering such enchanting encouraging and mesmerizing lecture uh, now this is the session of questionnaires uh, if uh, any of question from the participant sides you can ask the question to dr pong any questions from the participant side yes here is a question dr pong for you yeah definitely definitely it will help the bioprospection help uh, to increase the social economic conditions of the resident of the himalayan people and it will also no it's not the ecological imbalance we are uh, that's why i am suggesting the sustainable collection the sustainable method for the collection of the different part part uh, plant parts that will help in the collection that will help the, the sustainably the sustainable mode of the dyeing industry also So thank you, Professor, uh, Dr. Pont, once again. Now thank you. We'll for, thank uh, you, Dr. Das. Thank, thank, okay. thank you very thank much. You, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now our next speaker for this session is uh, Professor Muhammad Jasimuddin. Professor Jasimuddin, he's uh, uh, from the uh, Department of uh, Botany, uh, Dhaka University. So I'm happy <coughs> to introduce uh, such an international figure. Uh, Professor Jashimuddin, uh, he has published a number of research papers in both national and international journals. And he's attached with uh, a number of bodies both national and international, uh, attached with the government of Bangladesh with so many, uh, uh, with a number of bodies, uh, special mention may be made 
their uh, uh, conservation biology uh, and the tropical uh, biodiversity. Uh, he has also promoted the biodiversity conservation in Bangladesh through electronic media. It is one of the very, very important aspects that uh, Dr. Jasimuddin has covered. Uh, his uh, area of research was mainly forest management, traditional ethnobotanical knowledge for healthcare, and biodiversity conservation. Today, Dr. Jasimuddin will deliver a lecture on important consensus factors and antibacterial activity of ethnomedicinal plants of Brahmanbaria, Bangladesh. With these few words, I welcome Professor Jashimuddin to deliver his international webinar lecture. Good morning. To... Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me all? Yes, yes. Yes, yes sir. No, audible, sir. Audible, sir. Yes. Can you hear me all? Yes, yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Audible, sir. Okay. So, uh, how can I share my slide? Any option here? Slide sharing? Mr. Vishek, if you can kindly guide uh, Professor yes. Jeshimuddin uh, yes. uh, how to share. So, uh, Professor uh, Jeshimuddin, you need to click on present now. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, How to on, the, on the right hand side, you will see present now option is there. Kakali, uh, sir, Kakali should stop presenting. No, that shouldn't be a problem because Sanjeev. if uh, Dr. Muhammad starts sharing, it will overlap. Kakali, Kakali should stop presenting. So do you see that option uh, at the bottom of the screen? Present now. Oh, present. Uh, yes. Yeah. Present now. Yeah. Please click on that. And then you will see an option of your entire screen. Screen, yes. Yeah, please click on that. Once you do that, it will prompt your window where okay. you need to select the window okay. and click on share. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, please, please request Kakali mm -hmm. to then? stop presenting. Uh, then you need to select the window. Uh, do you see a new window like uh, where uh -huh. it says share? Okay. Sir, sir there, there, anything? Will be, sure. there will no. be a three, three dots, three dots on there. Uh, what do you see on the screen, sir? Did you see? Do you see anything? No. Not yet. Uh, have you clicked on share? Yes, yes, now. Now it is. Yeah, I already clicked. Yes. Uh, it has not started yet. But I. So, have you clicked on present now at the yes, uh, okay. entire screen? Yeah. Uh, Vishek, uh, I just uh, need to interfere once. Uh, I need to communicate, Professor Jashimuddin. If if you are comfortable, sir, we can wait for two three minutes. Kindly send your presentation to me. Maybe I can uh, run the slides on your behalf, and you can talk. Uh, uh, Professor Jashimuddin, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you can kindly, um, uh, if you can kindly present. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> Say, email your slides to me. Maybe I can uh, try to run the slide on my behalf on, from here. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah, yes. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Now it's, it's, coming. Coming up. it's coming. Yeah. 
Is okay now? No, we are not able to see your screen, sir, because uh, you have not selected the window that you want to share. So could you please stop sharing and start sharing again? Okay. Click on stop sharing. Stop. Stop presenting. Yeah, stop presenting and then click on present now again and yeah. then select the option your entire screen present now entire screen yeah and then a new window will pop up where you need to click on uh, select the window and then click on share <laughs> okay now not yet we are unable to see your screen and now it is presenting yes now we can see your screen did you see yeah yes we can see your screen sir Sir, kindly click the PowerPoint presentation on the, the taskbar just below. Sir, put, put, scroll down your mouse to the bottom. I think there is your PowerPoint presentation is open, sir. Hello? Yes, that one. Yeah, yeah, this one, this one, sir. Click on that. Please click on that. Yeah, yeah, click that, sir. It's okay now? Yeah, it's coming. Hopefully it will come. Yeah, it's coming, sir. It's okay now? Yeah, it's okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. It's okay. Did you see? Yeah, we can see your screen. Yes, sir. Your slides yes, sir. are visible, sir. Did you see my slide? Yes, sir. We are yes, sir. I can see your slide, sir. Please proceed, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Slide. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my research title is Informant Consensus Factors, Antibacterial Activity of Ethnomedicinal Plants of Brahman Barrier District. Uh, this is the uh, uh, work uh, uh, done by my PhD student, uh, uh, Ms. Tahmina Hawk and uh, another two professor professor abul hassan and mihillal shaha co supervisor with me uh, i acknowledge uh, their guidance with me to conduct this thesis i uh, ethno botanical records suggest that plants are sleeping giant of pharmaceutical industry and provide natural source of antimicrobial drugs that controlling some infectious disease globally. Large number of plants in different locations around the world have been extracted and semi-purified to investigate individually their antibacterial activities. The most interesting area of application of for medicinal plant extract is inhibiting growth of growth and reduction in number of number of the more serious pathogens selection of important taxa using ethno directed method is essential uh, is, is essential
selection of important tests using the directed method is essential because of time does not allow us to evaluate all existing medicinal plants scientifically from a particular area. Although hundreds of plant species have been tested for antimicrobial properties, but the majority have not yet been adequately evaluated. Ethnomedicinal plants should have to be investigated to better understand their properties, safety, efficacy. In Bangladesh, research on antibacterial activity, activities of medicinal plants have been started since 1986, and few noteworthy works are presented here, but none of these works were carried out. Antibacterial activities of ethnomedicinal plants by consensus analysis in particular area. The proper selection of important medicinal plant species is prerequisite to the proper selection of important ethnomedicinal plants is prerequisite to begin ethnopharmacological, phytochemical, and toxicological studies because of use laboratory cost. Therefore, the present study was undertaken to assess the antibacterial activities of ethnomedicinal plants through consensus analysis from Brahman Barrier District. The objectives of the study. Did you hear me all? Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, objectives to record, integrate, document all the scattered distribution of traditional knowledge of ethnomedicinal plants, to find out new ethnomedicinal plants and new formularies of ethnomedicinal plants, to select important ethnomedicinal plants of Brahmanbaria for antibacterial activity using informant consensus factor, fidelity level, and saturation frequency to determine antibacterial activity using extract from important ethnomedicinal plants, to determine the minimal inhibitory concentration and minimum bacterial concentration against bacterial strains, to, to, to determine the cytotoxicity of important ethnomedicinal plants, to validate the knowledge of ethnomedicinal plants used by the people of Brown Barrier scientifically to find out the threats and suggest some conservation measures for the protection of ethnomedicinal plants in Fraser. Uh, as you see in the map, uh, this, is, uh, this is Bangladesh. As you know, uh, the Brahman Barrier District is near to Indian uh, Eastern state of Tipura. This is the uh, study area. Uh, we totally we uh, um, uh, conducted 21 field trips to the study area uh, between June 2015 to 2017. Each field trip lasted for four to five days. Data were collected using semi-structured questionnaire through key informant interview, focus group discussion, field interview, plan interview, informal conversation with local people. Uh, a total of 467 local people uh, whose age range from 20 to 95 years old were interviewed at their ed education level up to MSc. Uh, maximum are male, rest of them are female. Professionally, they are mostly uh, local medicine men, that means kobiras, farmers, deliver, fishermen, small shopkeepers, teachers, health workers, village headmen, etc. Uh, there are some uh, interview scenery during uh, data collections. 
uh, we also collected uh, the sample uh, those who are uh, cited at medicinal plants oh, i was meeting this one of them. meeting meeting hello hi for each medicinal plants uh, either flowers and fruits were collected following the methods of highland and alexias maximum it's the medicinal plants identified in the field and laboratory by expert identification of medicinal plants were confirmed using standard literatures bowser specimen uh, kept in bangladesh national herbarium and salarkhan herbarium so this is the uh, uh, scenario of market survey in brown barrier district uh, So data analysis. Uh, for the analysis of data, all the elements uh, recorded in the field were grouped into uh, following categories. The categories were arranged according to the elements prevalence. Diarrhea and dysentery, respiratory tract disorder, diabetics, gynecological, dermatological, sexual problem, gastrointestinal, cardiovascular, fever and pain, mask musculoskeletal uh, helminthiasis dental problem mental disorder jaundice and others data analysis hi informant consensus factor uh, we use uh, to select the important medicinal plants as you know the factor basically expressed by uh, uh, f fig equal to number of use report minus number of taxa by number of use report minus one the fig values range between zero to one where high values indicate the relatively few taxa are used by large number of people while low value indicate that the informants disagree on the taxa to be used in the treatment within a category of illness Citation frequency, as you know, uh, uh, this is also used uh, uh, to select the important medicinal plants. Also, uh, we use fidelity level, uh, uh, fidelity level equal to number of plants by a number of informants into 100, where NF is the number of informants that report a species of a particular species to treat a particular disease. N is the number of informants that use the same is same plant as a medicine to treat any given disease. These three factors or the this model or uh, uh, help us to select the important medicinal plants uh, in the study area for further phytochemical or pharmaceutical studies. As you know, uh, uh, the area for a plant sample for antibacterial activities, the plant parts, each species were collected for a study area in the January 2018. Collected parts were brought into the plant taxonomy ethnobotany conservation biology laboratory. And anti antibacterial, uh, this is the uh, extract preparation. I don't like to go through it, as you know, how to prepare extracts, the uh, plants from the field and in the laboratory for uh, uh, final test of antibacterial activities. I don't like to go through it. Uh, this is the uh, different stage of machineries used in the experiment a test of uh, bacterial strain. I don't like to go through it. Okay. This is the activities were done in the laboratories. Minimal result now. Uh, a total of 247 medicinal species belong to 217 genera under 89 families have been recorded from the uh, for the treatment of 73 elements through 485 formularies. Among the medicinal plants, 206 species belong to dicolidins, 
36 species are monocots. Monocot one species each of fungi, tridophyta, and gymnosperm. The results indicated that the study area is rich in ethnomedicinal plants and diversity of knowledge of medicinal uses in the primary health care. For each specimen, local name, scientific name, family, life forms, part use, ailments, mode of treatment are presented in the table. As you see the table, uh, we uh, mm, recorded all this data for all medicinal species by this way. You see like Abroma Augusta, Abroma Augusta, uh, this is Ulot Kambal called Sterculisi family, life form is shrubs, uh, ailments uh, uh, used uh, to treat urine inf in infection, Perseus is leaf, juice taken internally. This is the way we use all species. Okay, so now, uh, uh, we determined informant consensus factor for the different uh, 15 categories of ailments. Okay, now diarrhea and dysentery. Tanjim, Tanjim, Tanjim. Well, Baba, presentation as a good Diarrhea and dysentery uh, treated by uh, 51 texts. Cited by 919 people. Fig value 0.96. Most cited species uh, for this category of treatment Centella asiatica and Lichia glutinosa among the 51 taxa. So this Centella asiatica and Lichia glutinosa is very important for the treatment of diarrhea and dysentery. In case of respiratory tract disorder, this uh, disorder uh, treated by 30 medicinal plants, cited by 506 informants. The fig value is 0 0.94. Most cited species for the treatment of respiratory tract disease, Osimum sanctum, Leucus lavandulifolia. In the next category, diabetics. Uh, diabetics, uh, 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 this category of disease treated by uh, 44 medicinal plants, cited by 637 informants. The fig value is 0 0.93. This category uh, uh, of diabetic, diabetic category treated, uh, most treated, mostly treated by coccinia grandis and gynura nepalensis. So among the 44 species, maximum people agreed to treat diabetes by coccinia grandis and gynura nepalensis. And in case of uh, gynecological problem, uh, 32 uh, species mentioned by the informants uh, and uh, the number of informants 468, 468. Informant uh, factor is 0 0.93. Among the 32 species, most cited species for the treatment of gynecological problem, Abrama Augusta and Mimosa purica. Dermalogic, in case of dermatological problem, uh, 46 species used by the local people in Brahmanbari district. Uh, this uh, uh, 46 species uh, 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 cited by uh, 532 informants. So among the among the 46 species, as a director indica, and Stephania japonica is the most cited species for the treatment of dermatological problem. So in case of uh, sexual problem, uh, 32 species uh, uh, cited by 
374 informants in Brahman Barrier District. Among the species, aloe vera and hipti subulans are mostly cited species for the treatment. Gastrointestinal uh, categories, 50 taxa uh, mentioned by the informants. The number of informants, 527. Among the, among the 50 species, Fideria fetida, Phylanthus reticulatus are most important species to treat gastrointestinal disease. Hel mus musculoskeletal disease or ailments, 48 species mentioned by 515 informants of brown barrier, Cisus quadri angularis and Erva sanguinolenta is the most uh, cited species for the treatment of musculo musculoskeletal disorder. In case of uh, helminthiasis, 13 species mention uh, the local people. Uh, the number of people, uh, 133. Uh, among the 30, 13 uh, medicinal plant species, Anonas sativa glycosmis pantophylla is the most cited species for the treatment of helminthiasis. In case of mental disorder, they uh, mention 11 species. Uh, the number of informants, 96. Uh, among the 11 species, most Cited species Datura metal and Strebelus spur. In case of cardiovascular disease, the people mention 137 people mention 16 species. Uh, among the many among the uh, one, 16 species, Terminalia urzuna, urzuna and Acaranthus spera is most. Uh, commonly used species for the treatment of cardiovascular disease. Fever and pain. Uh, informant mentioned 23 species. In fever and pain. Most uh, common species Plumbago zelenica, Alternanthera sessilis. A uh, gentle problem. Uh, uh, the local people mentioned 24 species. Uh, Cidium guazaba, Jatropha, Gosaipifolia is the most commonly used plants. Jaundice is a very common disease, but uh, people mentioned 23 species. Uh, most commonly used species is Cazanus cazan in Anthi Jabonica. And in case of So these are the uh, plants people use for the treatment of diarrhea and dysentery. You see uh, Central Asiatica, Lichia glutinosa, it's Indian laurel. I think uh, both plants are common uh, Indian Bangladesh. Uh, this is also, you know, uh, uh, the Leucus lavandulifolia and uh, uh, and her uh, both are common uh, Indian and Bangladesh, I think. Uh, this is for diabetes, you know, uh, this is Telakusa, this is uh, uh, Momordica dioikia, and this is Gynura napalensis. This is species also use. use. Uh, this, so this is another uh, species, uh, uh, like Abroma augusta, Mahmuza purica. Mm, aloe vera and hiptis uh, as, a, as a director indica and stephania jabonica uh, uh, this is a cyanodon dactylon uh, eruba sangulenta calotropis procera uh, this category uh, also gastrointestinal this is uh, pediaria fetida and uh, phylanthus reticulatus this category is treated by also 13 species. You know, this is the plant, Galactosmus, Glycosmus, Pantapilla, Anonas 
So it was, uh, this is, you know, uh, Termilene Arizona, Caranthus spara. Uh, this is Asparagus nasemosus. This is Bacopa monnieri. Mm, this is Plumbago zelenica, Ultranthanasus sessilis. Uh, so on. I, I, I don't like to go through it, I think. Uh, you know, this is the uh, result of uh, fidelity level among the among the among the plants species, a uh, hundred percent rely local people on this plant species, like uh, Adatota zilenica, Avarfa sanguinolenta, Avar carambula, Bacopa munire, Butia monosperma, Cazanus cazans, Cisus quadrangularis, Cascuta reflexa, Catharansus rosias, Delversia shishu, uh, Echinopsis peruviana, Ficus. This is the species just used for particular diseases. That's why uh, fidelity level in this case, 100%. If uh, Adhatota zelenica is used in different uh, uh, ailments, that case, the fidelity level uh, lower than 100. So most common medicinal plant families, uh, Fabaceae, uh, uh, Euphorbiaceae, Staraceae, Amaranthaceae, Ruticea, Aposinaceae, Cucurbitaceae, Poaceae, etc. Diversity of habitat, uh, as you know, I, I don't like to go through it. Um, plant pursues maximum leaf, bark, fruits, roots, seeds, etc. Status of ethnomedicinal plants. Uh, the plants we recorded 20% uh, from cultivated and 76% is wild. Uh, mode of administration, uh, I think uh, uh, maximum, maximum medicine take orally a minimum uh, uh, use externally. Uh, mode of preparation, basically juice is the most common mode of preparation, then paste, decoctions, cooked, and other way. Uh, this is uh, the, some new new uh, medicinal plants and some new formularies uh, we recorded uh, from these present studies. Uh, uh, among the 247 medicinal plant species, four species seem to be new for Bangladesh. Among the 485 formularies recorded in the state area, 96 formularies using 77 species seem to be new for Bangladesh. Both cases, further study is needed. Uh, this is a uh, new uh, Kalanki serata, Acaranthus bidendata, Lippi alba, Echinopsis peruviana. Uh, new formularies, I don't like to go through it. Uh, Comelina bengalensis, uh, it's a new formularies. Mm. So, uh, among the 247 ethnomedicinal plants belong to 217 genera, uh, who is selected? Some species based on our our uh, fig bellus, fig bellus, and uh, fidelity level bellus. The diary and dysentery categories obtain highest fig bellus. Uh, this disease categories are treated by 51 medicinal plant species by the local people of the Brown Barrier District. Among them, eight species were selected for the evolution of antibacterial activity based on highest consensus values to validate their ethnomedicinal uses. As you see, uh, the uh, Lyrsia glutinosa, mm, Scoparia dalsis, Hollandera antidesentrica, Clerodendrum viscosum, Dalbergia, Shishu, Phylanthus reticulatus, Fidaria pitidas, Stephania japonica. Uh, these are the most cited species and most uh, uh, fidelity level species we selected to evaluate their antibacterial activities in the laboratories. 
these are the plants you see you know i think these are the plants uh, uh, we already mentioned uh, uh, the uh, way of extraction of plant extract i don't like to go through it in my in our research 85 percent of the selected species were active against at least one or more bacterial stains the plants with highest concern values showed the biggest antibiotic activities the activity of maximum plant extract was more evident against the staphylococcus aureus bacillus cereus and Escherichia coli bacterial strain highest zone of inhibition was prominent for the positive control ciproploxis ciproploxacin about 24 to 28 millimeter and no zone of inhibition was found in the uh, control so this is the uh, bacterial colony applied with plant extract so uh, this is the growth inhibition uh, so the plant those who are highly cited by local people for the treatment of diarrhea and dysentery so this species we use in culture to show the activities so we we found the growth of uh, uh, growth inhibition zone is more so the experiment proved that the local people uh, and their citation is valid scientifically we prove in the laboratory uh, through the bacterial uh, uh, growth inhibition zone So antibiotic activities of Lichsia glutinosa, you see, uh, uh, we use both aqueous solution and ethanolic solution and positive control. So you see, uh, in case of aqueous solution, uh, because we emphasize on aqueous solution, uh, local people use uh, aqueous solution to treat their disease uh, rather than ethanolic solution because uh, 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 local people uh, never use ethanolic solution uh, in the treatment of diseases that's why aqueous solution is very important uh, uh, you see uh, the uh, activities uh, activities of uh, ethanolic uh, sorry aqu aqueous solution in comparison to ethanolic solution so uh, aqu aqueous solution is uh, uh, in case of uh, bacillus serious uh, staphylococcus aureus, in case of E. coli, uh, I think uh, activities is more desirable than ethanolic solutions. Dalbergia shishu, uh, in this case, you see the activities aqueous activity is more satisfactory than ethanolic activities. In case of Scoparia dalsis, uh, uh, aqueous, uh, aqueous solution activities more satisfactory than ethanolic solutions. In the same case, uh, in case of Hollerina dysentery, um, you see in, in, in case of uh, Clerodendum viscosum, uh, aqueous solution is more desirable than ethanolic solutions. Uh, in case of pediaria, uh, aqua solution is more satisfactory. Um, in case of phylanthus reticulatus, aqua solution is more satisfactory. Uh, minimal uh, inhibitory concentration zone. Aqua solution, I think. Uh, this is proof again, aqua is the best practice. You see, the bar uh, is is uh, near to and near to ethanolic solutions. So, uh, Lichsia glutinosa. 
and and it is the best species to treat a diarrhea and dysentery uh, other uh, uh, and also scoparia dalsis next scoparia dalsis is another best species to treat diarrhea and dysentery can you hear me all hello yes 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 Yes, Hello. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. So I'm in time, or uh, time is limited. Uh, another five, five or six minutes. Okay, okay, okay. I will finish okay. it. Okay. So in 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 this graph, you see uh, the scoparia dalsis and Plesia glutinosa. These are the two important species to treat diarrhea and dysentery in so this is the another method i don't like to go through it so litsia glutinosa was the most effective in re retarding microbial growth followed by dalbergia shishu scoparia dalsis holarena and dysentrica <coughs> against three bacteria and clerodendum viscosum against two tested bacterial strain. Epidaria, <coughs> uh, Pitida, and Phylanthus reticulatus were effective only against E. coli and uh, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Epidaria, Pitida, and Phylanthus reticulatus were effective only only against E. coli and respectively Stephania japonica was not showed any interbacterial activities. Maximum zone home inhibition was found for aqueous leaf extract from Lichsia glutinosa against E. coli at 10 milligram per dix with MIC value four milligram per liter per ml and MBC value 16. The species showed antibacterial activities. The MICs were higher than the four milligram per ml. The information of the uses of this leaf of Lichsia glutinosa, Dalbergia shishu, Scoparia dalsis provided the people of Brahman Baria is in agreement of the present results found in the antibacterial activities. However, the Lichsia glutinosa extract acted against more bacterial stains and had lower MIC values than that of Escobaria dalsis. The extracts with the least MIC values were from Lichsia glutinosa, uh, uh, Lichsia glutinosa, Dalbergia shishu, Scoparia dalsis, dalsis, cytotoxicity test. So th these are the survival of cells uh, using uh, Lichsia glutinosa, Dalbergia shishu, Scoparia dalsis. So we did not uh, did not recorded uh, any cytotoxicity was observed on barrow cells line so we can now confirm and suggest it to use these folk medicinal plants without any confusion for the treatment of diarrhea and dysentery so this is a cytotoxicity test cell line i don't like to go through it so now the medicinal plants in the Brahman Baria district uh, facing so many problems. And modern agriculture, one of the major problems, uh, industrialization, uh, rapid urbanization, extension of household area, roads and highway construction over populations, over harvesting illegal and unsustainable collections, lack of awareness among the local people, habitat destructions of wild plants, over exploitation of firewood, climate change, and globalizations. So these are the some scenarios you see 
what happened. In conclusion, uh, the present study is the first time, first time effort to evaluate antibacterial activity of ethnomedicinal plants of Brahman Barrio district. The record of total 247 ethnomedicinal plant species under 89 families is the indication of rich medicinal floral diversity of the district. Among the 247 medicinal plant species, four species seem to be new for the Bangladesh. 96 formularies use 70. Seven species seem to be new formularies for Bangladesh. Uh, to record 51 ethnomedicinal plants for diarrhea and dysentery treatment uh, in Brown Bear District is the indication of rich ethnomedicinal plant knowledge among the local people. Among the, the present research was the first, sorry. Uh, the present research was the first attempt in Bangladesh to establish link between the field data and scientific evaluation in the laboratory. Based on current findings, conclusion can be done that the Lysia, Glutinosa, Dalbergia, Shishu, Scoparia, Dalsis, Holarana, and Dysentrica, and Clerodendum viscosum could be the potential source of new antibacterial agent. Therefore, the results validate the traditional use of ethnomedicinal plants species for the treatment disease caused by bacteria and bound body. Further long-term studies are needed to isolate, evaluate, characterize, and screen out pure compound from <coughs> to mitigate bacterial disease. Uh, finally, uh, where I, we greatly acknowledge the financial support of the Prime Minister's Office of the Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, also thankful to the Microbiology Laboratory of Dhaka Medical College and the Department of Pharmaceutical Technology of Dhaka University of Dhaka for providing bacterial strains. Thank you very much for passion hearing. Thanks again. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Professor Jassimuddin, uh, for presenting such a beautiful lecture and uh, lots of information was here. And we have covered uh, uh, district Brahman Baria, uh, and we have find out a number of plants which have a lot of potential, their activities against the bacteria. So I'm sure the participants who have listened to the lectures of Professor Joshimuddin, they have enjoyed a lot. Now the session is question here. Uh, if the participants, you have any questions, you can ask Professor Joshimuddin, uh, because time is very short, because we have another speaker who is waiting for us. Do you have any questions, participants? Professor Joshimuddin is ready to uh, answer your query. Then I have the question, Professor Joshimuddin. Professor, can yeah, you please, hear me? Uh, I have done some uh, yes, work yes. on the antimicrobial properties of uh some plants uh but it's a very difficult to formulate the active ingredients after the isolation until and unless this uh formulate in certain level then how can we uh produce them commercially is it possible to uh find out the active ingredients and send it to the pharmaceutical company for the production of their uh, in the uh, uh, product that can be used directly the medicinal shop that you can purchase it uh, to apply against the people to cure the different disease. What is your idea? Is it possible uh, within a, uh, a stipulated period of time? 
Exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, I, th I think uh, we just try to uh, uh, prove the local people perception about uh, uh, the treatment of disease by medicinal plants. This is our first motto. Then we try to now uh, validate, validate the information, whether it is uh, really worked or not. That's why, uh, uh, based on their informations, we collected uh, this species uh, for the laboratories. Then we just applied. We just applied this uh, uh, plant material on bacterial growth. If we uh, confirm the growth inhibition zone, we found the growth inhibition zone, then we can tell pharmacologist or uh, uh, drug researcher. These are the these are the informations told us the local people now we initially proved this information is scientifically truth yes, so yes. we just tell pharmacologist they these are the their duties yes 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 okay. thank you very much but well, thank we, you very much that we says further to isolate comp yes, i yes. think it is possible thank you professor jasmuddin for uh, for highlighting uh, lots of our informations uh, uh, thank you very much thank you very much now our next speaker is uh, thank you. Thank you. for this session is professor shapun bhartchaj uh, uh, Professor Vortchas, uh, am I audible? Professor Vortchas? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 Professor Shapon Vortchas, his schooling is from Ramkishna Mission and his graduation and post graduation, uh, and also his PhD from the University of Calcutta. Uh, he joined uh, West Bengal Educational Service and uh, he has done more than 30 years of his service. Uh, he, now he's a retired professor, but after his retirement, he's still now attached with another uh, famous educational institution in our uh, in West Bengal, that is Lady Brumont College. He's working there as a guest faculty. Uh, professor Bhartchas. Uh, he has uh, published a number of research papers, uh, both in national and international report. Uh, I am very happy to uh, say that Professor Virtuos has written a book on uh, microbiology in Bengali. It is called Anujibidda. I must mention another important uh, things uh, that he founded the microbiology department at Maulana Azad College, affiliated to the University of Calcutta. And I think and I believe it, that this is the department which is one of the best one. So for the undergraduate microbiology is concerned in entire Eastern region. He uh, spent a lot of times for the development of this department. Uh, I shall not go in details again, though uh, if I if I say about the Professor Vartyas, it will continue and continue, but I will not go in details. With these few words, I welcome Dr. Sapun Vartyas to deliver his international webinar lecture. And his topic is interactions in sustaining life. I'm sure the participants who uh, participated today's program they will enjoy a lot after listening the lectures of Professor Bhartchas. With these few words, I welcome Professor Bhartchas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you see me? Yes, yes. 
मन हम so at the bottom of the uh, this uh, screen you will see three options uh, the first one is for the microphone the second one is for the call uh, accept and decline and the third one is for camera could you please click on the third option that is uh, the uh, sign of a camera yes i i am i am clicking the camera but the camera automatically turning off i don't know why okay okay so in that case uh, could you please disconnect from the call and rejoin again Okay, I'll rejoin. Yeah, okay. and it will ask you for granting permissions. That means that you have to turn on the camera. So please click on yes. Okay. Hello sir can you hear us <clears throat> Hello sir It it's telling the camera failed i don't know why camera failed Then I fear you might have to turn, uh, shut down the laptop totally and then shut on. Mr. Abhishek, am I correct? Yes, yes. Then my, you might have to restart the system. Uh, uh, Dr. Das, so shall we wait for a few minutes before uh, Professor Bhattacharya uh, gets uh, back to us? Hello. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, we don't have any option. We need to wait for a few minutes uh, unless Professor Bhattacharya joins us. I think he, I hope he would be able to join us very soon after rebooting of the um, laptop. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so uh, patients uh, hearing of, uh, I think all the participants they will 
uh, share with us. It will take, I think, a little bit of time. Yes, now? Ah, 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 Yes, sir, we are able to see you and hear you. Okay, thank you very much. There were some hiccups, so sorry for the hiccups. No worries, sir. thank you for joining. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no I don't problem, know whether, whether the presentation will be all right or not. I don't know. Even if it, the presentation fails, mm -hmm. I can continue. Okay. okay. But you have to, you have to see me. Uh, okay. Start so, sharing uh, the screen, sir. Huh? Uh, yes, I'll be. I, I shall be sharing the screen. Okay. I shall. I shall try to share share the screen. Yeah. So there is an option present now at the bottom right yes, hand side. Right? Yes. Uh, let me bring out the presentation first. Yeah. Sure, sir. <laughs> okay. Uh at the outset, I uh, want to express my gratitude and thankfulness to the authorities, to IQSC, to principal uh, of Mohanpur College, which is a government college, new government college. Uh, it was formed uh, before my retirement, and I knew uh, Dr. Daipan Sinha uh, was posted from the very, uh, very uh, first. A few days, within very first few days of opening up this college, he started working there. <clears throat> so um, I'm thankful also to him because uh, for for inviting me to uh, deliver this short lecture while I'm in my home, while you all listeners in your homes, and uh, we are not across a blackboard, across the table, on a dais. It's a new form, new normal. We have to adopt to adapt to it. We, well, I think we have quite ably adapted to it. But as because I do not frequently take classes, that's why uh, I still get nervous when I talk on this these platforms. I'm I shall be talking about interactions, interactions for sustaining life. 
Now, we all know for sustaining life, interactions are absolutely essential. No life can thrive alone, you know. The for basic interaction between two, spe between two members of a community or two members of a species to sustain it is the interaction for sex, is interaction for reproduction. So from, the, from, from sustaining a species uh, uh, to thrive, survive, to best utilize the uh, potentials of the environment and to, to uh, get itself going, an organism needs to interact with other organisms. These may be the organisms which are of same community or which may be the organisms of different communities. There is, it may be an interaction between the same population or maybe an interaction among the different populations. I shall be talking about both, but my uh, lecture will be restrict, more or less restricted to the microbial interactions because microbial interactions are the models where the interact you can study the dynamics of the kinetics of the interaction in a microbial model on microbial model not only but you can you can easily study the dynamics of interactions in a microbial model so microbial models are unique examples of all kinds of interaction whatever interaction you can think about all kinds of interactions are exhibited by the microbes yes Go to my slide. <laughs> Is it visible now? Uh, not yet, sir. Uh, not Uh, have you clicked on present now? Yes. Okay. Then there will be an option, your entire screen, a window and a tab. I have, I have selected my entire screen. Okay. Then there will be a pop-up, a new window where you need to select uh, the screen and then click on share. Do you see that option? Yes. Okay, now it is coming up. Yes, we are able to see your screen, sir. Please go ahead. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. We are able to see your screen. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, sir, kindly hide notification panel. Uh -huh. uh, kindly hide notification panel. Notification there panel. Cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At the bottom. There are cross. A, another one. Hide. Hide. Hide option is also there. Hide option is there. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's okay now. It's, it's okay. Okay. <clears throat> Interactions in sustaining life. As I said, I, I'll be talking in a microbial, in microbial models. There are two types within the same population and within different populations. Let us see the types of interactions within the same population. Within the same population, the interactions can be negative, where if you think about in a, a population which is growing in a good potential, in, as a result of negative interaction, the population will go down, population density will come down. In a positive interaction, in, a, in microbial models, uh, the positive interaction result in uh, positive logarithmic growth. If the other uh, factors uh, remain, remain constant, and when there is a combined uh, positive and negative interaction, com combination of positive and negative interaction, there will be growth followed by the uh, negative growth. There will be positive growth followed by negative growth. <clears throat> a very good example of positive interaction is, you see, colony formation, bacterial colony formation. Each bacterium, each bacterium is... Uh, if say if it is if it is flagellated, even if it is not flagellated, it can glide. So bacterial population, the bacteria 
whether they uh, tend to glide away from one another, if they tend to glide away from one another, there will be no bacterial colonies. But we see the bacterial population grow together to form colonies, at least 10 to the power 8 cells come together to form a colony. So bacterial colony formation itself is a good example of a positive interaction. There are interactions, there are examples of bacterial conjugation, you know, conjugation by which the bacterial gene is transferred by contact to other uh, bacterium in a plus, uh, plasmid bearing donor transferred is able to transfer its plasmid to a recipient which doesn't have a plasmid. In Enterococcus faecalis, the entire conjugation process doesn't take place by uh, pili formation, but it takes place by a, a uh, aggregation formation, a colony formation, uh, where the transfer this transfer takes place. Another example is, this is Dictyostelium. Dictyostelium is a protozoa. It's a, a myxomycetes kind of uh, organism protozoal. It is individual cells. Individual cells are, they feed on bacteria. They basically feed on bacteria. When the bacterial population, this, these are the amoebae, they are pseudopodium, so they can very well move away from one another. They usually move away from one another for feeding on amoeba, uh, feeding on bacteria. When the bacterial population dwindles, there is dart, there is stress, nutritional stress, then the cells come together. Usually the centrally located cells, they release cyclic AMP pulses. These cyclic AMP pulses bring the other amoeba together, close together, and they form, a, they form an aggregation. This aggregation looks like a slug, a snail without a shell. This looks like a slug. This slug, whole slug can migrate. And its tip swells. In the tip, it form, forms a sporocarp. And the sporocarp releases spores. These spores germinate and grow separately. So this fruit body formation, sporocarp formation, Dictyostelium, is excellent laboratory-based example where you can study positive interaction uh, among the microbial population, positive interactions. <clears throat> when you talk about negative interactions, there are negative interactions in the same population. There are several examples of negative interaction in the same population. Most common example you can think about is E. coli growth. When E. coli grows, you know, E. coli divides doubles in every 20 minutes. Uh, and E. coli, an E. coli cell is, you know, its weight is 10 to the power minus 14 grams. Its weight is 10 to the power minus 14 grams. Now, if you, if all factors remain constant, if you continue to give supply uh, of nutrients to the E. coli, if other temperatures and all other factors remain constant, then E. coli will, one E. coli will divide into two in 20 minutes, in 40 minutes it will be four, in 60 minutes, it will be 8. In 80 minutes, it will be 16. So this way, if you allow E. coli, one E. coli cell to grow unstopped for 48 hours, then what will happen? Imagine what can be the weight of this E. coli mass. Can you imagine what can be the weight of this E. coli mass? <laughs> this E. coli mass will be 4,000 times than that of the Earth. That of the earth, this E. coli mass within 48 hours will attain a mass which is 4,000 times that of the earth. If you back calculate, it was 2,000 times that of the earth 20 minutes before 48 hours. <laughs> it was 1,000 times that of the earth uh, just 40 minutes before uh, 48 hours. So that's where you can back calculate. If you back calculate, you will reach 0 minute 10 to the power minus 14 grams. So these negative interactions are absolutely essential for, for optimizing the nutrient, the available, available nutrient, and to sustain, because a 10 to the power, uh, a, a, a 4,000 time, uh, times of Earth's mass, uh, where from it will get water, or where, where from it will get nutrients, it will uh, has to look for other planets to survive. So that is not possible. Uh, so what happens is this, there is a selection pressure itself on the bacterial mass when there is, 
when there is depletion of nutrients, when there is depletion of water, when there is other factors playing. In equally, there is an excellent example of suicide. When there is dart, they commit suicide. They select some cells to commit suicide. How they do, do this is the hawk sock interaction. Hawk it means host killing, host killing. The gene for host killing, it produces a hawk, hawk toxin. It, it's a kind of lysine which lyses the bacteria. It, if hawk uh, genes are located on the, on, the, on the chromosome, it's a chromosomal gene. And it's an interacting RNA, RNA I is produced by plasmid, which is SOC. SOC is suppression of kill. The SOC gene is based on a plasmid. In a normal cell, the Hawk proteins, Hawk mRNAs, uh, are produced, but they are neutralized by Sock RNAs. And when a double stranded mRNA is produced, it is degraded by RNAs 3, and the cell survives. Survives as, as long as the nutrition and every, all other conditions are all right. When there is a dot, when there is a selection a pressure on the bacterial population, then what happens? It releases the plasmid, leaves it, it cures itself of the plasmid. When it cures itself of the plasmid, the Hawk toxin is produced. There is no, no SOC RNA. What, wherever, whatever SOC RNA we are there, they are rapidly degraded and the Hawk toxin lyses the cell and cell commits, simple commits suicide. So that's what is a negative interaction in a bacterial population, which is taking place all the time, all the time. <clears throat> this is Hawk Sock system, you see, there is Hawk uh, Sock minus. Uh, when there is Sock minus and when there is Sock plus, you see the cells, Sock plus cells, they are taking, taking a shape of the ghost cells. When there is no Sock, there is the host, hey, this is in presence of rifampicin. This, this in presence of an antibiotic, uh, this, these cells taking the shape of the host cells. <clears throat> anyway, these are types of interactions between diverse microbial populations. So we talked about the same microbial population. Right? Now we talk about diverse microbial population. And we, know, we all know about these interactions. There are neutralism when there is no effect on either of the population. We, we as a model, we, we think about let us think about two populations, population A and population B. Neutralism, there will be no effect on either. Commensalism, there is a positive effect on one and no effect on other. Uh, Emensalism, no effect on one, negative effect on other. Um, mutualism, synergism, proto-cooperation and symbiosis, they are positive for both. Now, nowadays for microbial population study, all these are grouped in commensalism. <coughs> Competition, where a negative for both competition, parasitism, positive for one, negative for the other, predation, positive for one, negative for the other. Let us one by one see what, the, what these interactions are. In a microbial population, neutralism is exhibited when they are, they are, they are separated in space and time. They are separated, separated by space, particularly in oligotrophic environment. Oligotrophic environment is a an environment where nutrients are minimum like growing in water like growing in marine habit habitats these are oligotrophic environments there is very few very little and very little nutrient available and the two populations which survive they actually stop utilizing that whatever nutrients are there and they neutralize one another's effect and both the populations eat very little utilize the nutrients very little so that whatever a nutrient oligo, uh, nutrient is there in the oligotrophic environment, they remain, there remain some for their subsequent population. <clears throat> when two populations are outside their natural habitats, naturally they, they are neutral to one another. Resting stages, spores, etc. They are neutral. So examples of neutralism these are. Commensalism, there are different types of commensal relationships. One good example is co-metabolism. As I said, it is beneficial for one and for, for other, there is no effect. One very good example is co-metabolism of cyclohexen. Now, Mycobacterium vacui, it is a species of TB causing 
uh, back to TB, causing uh, caused in um, causing tuberculosis in uh, vaca, that is in cow, in cattle. So Mycobacterium vecchi, it is like its normal substrate, with propane is utilized propane as carbon source utilized to release to obtain energy to release carbon dioxide and hydrogen but when cyclohexane is present in the medium it gratuitously utilizes the cyclohexane and and breaks down the cyclohexane into cyclohexanone and subsequently cyclohexanol it is g is wrong this is this way h and subsequently breaks breaks down to cyclohexanol. Now this cyclohexone or cyclohexanol, they are not utilized by Mycobacterium vecchi. They are not, they are of no use of Mycobacterium vecchi. It just gratuitously does this while it utilizes propane. And what happens, you know, the cyclohexanol pseudomonas, which is unable to utilize cyclohexane, utilizes this cyclohexanol. The end product of Mycobacterium vecchi and it obtains energy from there. So it is a co-metabolism of two substrates, which is beneficial for another organism. Synergism, synergism or proto-cooperation. Proto-cooperation or synergism is, as a model, a population one, it utilizes a compound, say compound A substrate. And population T, two, utilizes a second compound, a compound B. But the end product of this breakdown line is compound C. Neither can produce directly compound C from compound A or compound B. Population 2 is unable to utilize compound A. Population 1 is unable to utilize compound B. But both can utilize compound C by a synergistic effect of these two populations. Good example is compound A, it's arginine. Arginine in E. coli is utilized, is, uh, is uh, converted to agmatine by dicarboxylase. <coughs> dicarboxylase. This compound A, arginine, is also utilized by Enterococcus faecalis to produce a different product, which is ornithine. Now, E. coli is unable to produce ornithine from compound A. It just goes up to agmatine. Enterococcus faecalis is unable to produce agmatine, but it produces ornithine. And this ornithine is utilized by population two, two that is uh, the E. coli, to produce putrescin, the, the third compound. This putrescin is utilized by both Enterococcus faecalis and E. coli. So neither can produce putrescine from arginine. It takes a roundabout way. And this is an example of synergy, synergistic relationship or proto-cooperation, where two steps are, are separately uh, uh, taken care of by two different organisms. And the and the third product is utilized by both. These, these are the, okay, let us see here. <clears throat> commensalism or syntrophism. Uh, within commensalism, syntrophism. Syntrophism, where two or interaction between two or more populations that supply each other's nutritional need. You can look between the relationship of chlorobium, which is a photosynthesizing bacteria, and spirella. Now, for chlorobium, hydrogen sulfide is the electron donor and carbon dioxide is the carbon source. By utilizing this, they form formate and elemental sulfur. Elemental sulfur is electron donor for spirillum and formate is the carbon source for spirillum. It produces carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. So this thing goes on. One organism supplies the needs for the other. And this circular mechanism goes on. Simil similarly, chlorobium and the sulfur vibrio, where the relationship is supplying hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide to chlorobium and getting organic carbon and sulfur from chlorobium to the sulfur vibrio. 
syntrophism. Syntrophism can be seen in a three-way relationship also. Uh, if you see this disalphohybrio vulgaris, DV is disalphohybrio vulgaris. Disalphohybrio vulgaris, it utilizes ethanol to produce acetate. Now, this acetate is converted by methanobacterium, uh, methanosarsina barkeri to methane and releases simple carbon dioxide. <clears throat> Similarly, this alpha vibrio uh, vulgaris utilizes HCO3 to produce bicarbonate, to produce formate. This formate is the source for release of methane by methanobacterium formicum. This is a very common centrophic relationship in a flock, very well found in methane, in methane releasing environments, including all of our septic tanks. Septic, the release of methane by septic tank is not a single organism pathway. It is a pathway which is syntrophically operated by one, where one leaves, the other takes up. It is a, a aerobic, anoxic, anaerobic pathway, one by one, followed where one's need is supplied by the other. The first supplies for needs for the second, the second supplies needs for the other, and a hugely complex cellulose and other wastes of us are converted, simplified into very simple uh, carbon dioxide and methanes, which can further be utilized as biogas. Mutualism, we all know about mutualism. As, as students of botany, we all know about lichens. We know about endosymbionts in protozoa. These are the chlorella in, in paramecium. These are chlorella in paramecium. Uh, in paramecium aurelia, there is a, bacter which, a bacteria which inhabits uh, paramecium aurelia. This is Cidiobacter. Uh, paramecium is a good model for studying the, all these relationships. It's a very good model. I'll come to that later. Temperate fudge is also an example of mutualism. You can, you can, you can argue that temperate fudge, ultimately temperate fudge is like a bacteriophage lambda. They kill the bacteria to release uh, the, uh, uh, the integrated prophage or the episome and ultimately lyse the bacteria. So all, uh, all lysogenic cycle end up in lysis. But while, so what is the benefit of the bacteria in which this integration has taken place? You know, what is the benefit of this bacterium? The bacteria in which this integration has taken place is resistant to MOI, resistant to multiplicity of infection. When it is infected by temperate fudge, and the fudge chromosome goes into it and integrates itself into the bacterial chromosome, the fudge becomes immune to other infections. The, sorry, the bacteria becomes immune to other infections, including infection by other fudges. So th that's a phenotypic change which takes place in the bacteria. So this is also an example of mutualism. It only kills the bacteria, it only lyses the bacteria when the bacteria is in dire strait. When the bacteria is, say, irradiated by UVI, the bacteria itself commits suicide when it releases uh, the, uh, the um, when, when it converts it, its Rake A recombination A enzyme into a Rake A protease and uh, breaks down and uh, the uh, proteins which are uh, which which are blocking the UVA, UVB, etc., UV repair pathway. So that's a different story. I'm not going into this. But this, these are the uh, mutual relationships which are found in the bacterial model. This is mutualism. This is the integration of bacteria, uh, into the integration of phage chromosome into the uh, bacterial chromosome. We all know this between gal and biocytes. This integration takes place. And as I said, this is an example of mutualism between bacteria and should be viewed as an example of mutualism. This is a, within a paramecium cidiobacter, several bacteria within a paramecium cell, bacterial endosymbiosis. They, the, they, they, they uh, utilize complex uh, carbon compounds, make them simple for availability of the paramecium. That's how the mutualism goes on. 
competition competition is where uh, negative uh, for both but not always as a, as a system or as a model we all knew that competition can uh, re uh, result in in negative for the both but not always not always is is one example in the paramecium there are two species of paramecium uh, one is paramecium morelia and one is paramecium cordata when they are separately grown growing separate cultures they can pretty well grow it's in separate cultures they can pretty well grow uh, in separate cultures no problem with that but when they are grown in combined the one outperforms the other paramecium aurelia outperforms the paramecium cordatum which is ultimately dwindled which are ultimately uh, the population comes down to absolutely nil this is a 16 day experiment which was designed by Gauss. whoever is uh, is acquainted with ecology knows about gauss's contribution in uh, determining these relationships 16 day experiment Gauss's model that competition results in exclusion of one of the competitors. Competition can also uh, result in resource partitioning. Resource partitioning uh, among the annual lizards. And this is shady, moist side kind of lizards which roost there are different from kind of li uh, lizards which roost in the sunny dry area and some retain themselves in the intermediate zone. This is, this is also true for the plants also. We know about sunny plants, shady plants. The plants which are grown, on the, growing on the sunny side of, the, of a hill are one kind of plants which are growing on the shady side of the hills are the other kinds of plants. Absolutely different morphologically and as far as other factors are also concerned. <clears throat> Amensalism is exhibited by antibiosis, by allelopathy. There are several examples in plants, animals, uh, but bacterial models are easy to study. Uh, antibiosis is release of antibiotics. There's, a, there's, there's some difference between antibiotics, antibiotics and allelopathy. Allelopathy defines a relationship between two or more organisms which are mediated by allelochemicals, either inducing or inhibiting the growth of one organism. Uh, but antibiosis defines a relationship between two or more organisms which are mediated by antibiotics inhibiting the growth of one organism <clears throat> so it is either inducing it can be both positive and negative either induces the growth induces the growth or inhibits the growth but it is one way it, it always inhibits the survival of the other this very good example, my previous speaker talked about uh, inhibition zones. Uh, these are very simple experiments that can be set up in the laboratory. This is an, uh, this is a, an example of antibiosis, Harposporium. This produces antibiotic, which are, which are exhibiting antibiosis or growth inhibition against uh, Pestilomyces variety. Antibiosis. <clears throat> uh, for that matter, antibiosis is our uh, source of survival. If imagine if the antibiotics were not produced, and if in 1929 Alexander Fleming uh, hadn't done this and hadn't, hadn't, hadn't informed us about the presence of organ presence of chemicals which can kill. Uh, which, the presence of chemicals in organisms which can kill other organisms our complete our life has completely taken u-turn for survival otherwise the population would have dwindled and this is a contribution of the microorganisms nowadays on antibiotics are produced synthetically but all mother compounds are present in the microorganisms only uh, 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 i mean streptomyces venezuela only this organism produces more than 100 different micro um, uh, antibiotics, including streptomycin, including tetracycline, uh, and other antibiotics also. <clears throat> uh, this is allelopathy. One example, allelopathy is, allelopathy is responsible for uh, a decomposition of plant litter. 
Why? Because when the plant litters decompose or when the plant root release uh, chemicals, then these exudation products or this litter, they allow other, they allow, they induce, I'm talking about induction, they induce the uh, growth of the soil borne organisms, fungi and bacteria with cellulitic activity to boost their growth, to reach a uh, population, to reach a threshold population and to utilize this litter. If this litter were not utilized, then it would, it would have been taken, it would have taken just four days to cover entire earth surface. Entire earth surface would have been covered just within just four days by the plant litters. Plant litter degradation is an allelopathic relationship between the organisms which are soil which are soil inhabiting, which are otherwise sleeping, which are otherwise dormant, and which are boosted, which get boosted to grow to reach the threshold number uh, by quorum sensing, by sensing the chemical compounds in their optimal concentrations and to grow. So this is a relationship which is uh, mental <coughs> parasitism. Parasitism can be studied in bacteria, in, in, in plant, in animals, in bacterial model, you can study parasitism in Delo Vibrio. Delo Vibrio Parasiticizes grows in E. coli. E. coli is such a little bacteria, such a little bacterium is E. coli. Within this, yellow vibrio, a much smaller bacterium grows within this. It infects, it is normally flagellated, it infects, gets into it, then becomes a filament like structure by utilizing the centrally located E. coli cytoplasm. As the cytoplasm concentration diminishes, it grows, grows and grows and grows, acquires flagella, lyses the cell, and is escaped. This is the this is a microphotograph of Delo Vibrio within an E. coli cell. So they are released microparasitism, and they attack new cells also. <clears throat> this is a model for studying parasitism because in every 20 minutes you get a population of a bacterial culture doubled uh, in every 20 minutes in your laboratory. So how easy it is to study in a microbial model the example of parasitism and its kinetics. Predation, predation is a predator-prey relationship. Again, the model is paramecium and didenium. Didenium, <clears throat> paramecium, it, uh, it's uh, resource is Seracia. In an in tube, if you want to grow, then Seracia bacteria grow paramecium together and together with its predator, Didenium nasutum. What will happen? The relationship is like this that when paramecium concentration, paramecium concentration gets to its peak only when its predator concentration is low only when its predator concentration is low. When the predator concentration uh, is uh, uh, risen up, when the predator concentration rises, then the prey concentration falls down. It is very nice. And this is the Lotka, famous Lotka Volterra model for predator prey relationship. Think about hare and wolf. Think about deer and tiger. Whenever the deer population, whenever the tiger population dwindles, the deer population rises. When the tiger population goes up, big cat population goes up, the deer population goes down. So predator pair relationship is like is, is a model like this, up, down, up, down, and corresponding rise and getting down of the prey, prey population. There is, uh, this can be expressed by these differential equations uh, presented by Lotka and Volterra. These are the Predator per relationship. Uh, am I taking very long time? <laughs> okay. I will end up. I'll. I'll. Uh, this is twelve. Uh, yes, I'll end with a very current, uh, very current information published in this COVID time. Uh, this is a unique relationship 
between bee and the plants, between bees and the plants. It was published in Science. It merited a 30 plus, uh, 35 plus index factor journal, uh, Science to publish it. But the observation is simple. What is the, what is the observation? Fotheni uh, Pashaliju, who is uh, of Turkish origin, uh, but walks in Sweden. Uh, she observed that uh, when uh, there when there is uh, even not a flowering season of say wheat, she observed some bees are going around the wheat. Plants. It was not a flowering season of wheat, but the, some some bees are going around the wheat plants, going there and coming back. By typical of bee dancing, they are telling that they, they are telling their other some some excuse some me, some sound is coming from some microphones are kept on. Yes, yes. Uh, although it was not the flower normal flowering season, some bees are going and they are by typical bee dancing there and forming their hive mates that. They have found something. What was that? Hotheni observed that the bees are coming to the plants and making some holes. The number of holes are restricted. Some, some about six holes, six, six half circle kind of holes on the wheat plants. And what she observed is that these plants, they are flowering one month beforehand compared to their normal time of flowering. One month ahead of the normal time of flowering, they are they they, they flower. So, so what she does, she set up a laboratory model. In the laboratory, she kept two bees in two separate compartments. One one bees were one group of bees were supplied with pollens, nectars. They are well-fed pollens and the plants in their compartment. These bees were lazy. They do not make these holes on the plants. The other plants, they were be they were hungry bees. They were for a quite long time. They were kept devoid of, they were kept in environments devoid of their resources, devoid of pollens or devoid of uh, nectars. And immediately after setting up this experiment, she observed that these bees, which were devoid of their pollens, these be these bees which are hungry. They are busy in making holes, busy in making holes, half circular holes on the plant surfaces. They took two plants. One is the one is mustard, uh, and the other I'm forgetting. Say mustard. They are making holes on the mustard leaves, and these plants flowered one month before their normal time of flowering. When she tried to replicate the experiment by making the holes herself, not the bees, by making the holes herself on the uh, leaf, leaves, she found that the plants flowered earlier, but not that early, not that early, uh, but uh, flowered earlier. So biting the plants to make it flower is one unique relationship where, where, when, where, what is actually the significance of this relationship? It might have huge significance in for the gardeners, uh, for for the uh, for the agriculturists might have huge significance, but the exact uh, kinetics of the relationship has not been cleared yet. Whether it is a, a selection pressure. Whether the bees, they, what information do they give to the plants? Plants give the information to the bees in the form of pollens, in the form of nectars. Ne and the nectars and pollens are, are absolutely important, absolutely essential parts of the beehive. Uh, the bees need to survive. These, these are their meals. But they are biting the plants one month beforehand the flower. And after uh, one month uh, before their normal time of flowering, and the plants are forced to flower one month beforehand. This is a unique relationship. Uh, the, the, the significance of which is, has, is not uh, very clear yet. 
whether it is it uh, a commensal relationship certainly a commensal comments, relationship but it is putting the information uh, pretty well beforehand and the result is not immediate the result is uh, far uh, uh, quite a distant quite a few days away from the event but quite a few days before for which this event is taking place so this is the newest relationship between animals and plants between between insects and plants we all know about we all know about i i i I'll end up with a story of smithsonian institute published very long ago this is finding out a grass animal cloa animal cloa was kept in as a uh, specimen as a as a herbarium specimen in paris in Kew Botanical Garden first, and from there it was transferred to Paris Botanical Garden. In Paris Botanical Garden, some plants were grown, but they died, only some herbariums remained. And on the herbarium, it was written that it was from Brazil Bahia. Bahia means seashore. In Brazil, there is a huge shoreline. So where from it is? <clears throat> and there was no other information. And this merited an expedition to Brazil. Uh, WWF funded and uh, Smithsonian Institute funded expedition three times. A third time, a, a, a lady in the group, she found that some bees she heard about, which were uh, uh, which always roosted, which always made high very close to by very close to this grass and amokloa. Some bees are uh, flocking around. A kind of grass. They immediately stopped their cars. They had the herbarium sheet with them. After three expeditions, they found that these bees are actually flocking a very uh, unkempt, very uh, and out of the sight uh, sight of a group of grasses, which included this grass. Animocloa. It was found 200 years later by following insect, by following the bee plant relationship. So we all know this. These are around us. These are these relationships are around us. If only we observe carefully, as Fotini observed. She observed that some bees are flocking around uh master red master plants or white master plants even if there was no flower and that immediately struck her what is the what is the relationship and she ultimately found out which merited a science publication with these words and with this uh, uh and 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 thanking the chairperson and thanking the mohanpur college authority i finish here i'm I should be happy if there are some questions. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, uh, uh, for delivering such a beautiful and informative uh, lectures. You have enriched because we had a little bit idea about the uh, 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 about the interactions to uh, our knowledge are restricted only among. I mean, cellism, common cellism, etc., etc. But you have highlighted some important aspects, especially the uh, uh, syntrophism. It was a very, in, it is a very beautiful interactive uh, uh, terms that I have heard today. And also, you have highlighted another important things that is bumble bees. What a beautiful information today we. Uh, I got, got it from you. Uh, uh, this bees, in one hand, damaging the plant leaves; on the other hand, encouraging uh, the flowering. So uh, it's a beautiful information and kind information. So I I I convey my thanks to Professor Shaman Bhattacharya for delivering such a beautiful and informative lectures. Now uh, this is the session of uh, questionnaire. If the participants do have any questions, you can ask uh, because uh, time is very short. Uh, Dr. Bhattacharya is ready to answer your query. 
Do you have any questions, participants? Without any hesitation, you can ask questions to Dr. Bhattacharya. I have a request uh, 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 one participant, Umabhati uh, Kumantham. You please switch off your video. Uh, it is disturbing us. Please switch off your video. Uh, do you have any questions, participants? No question. Then I have a question, Shabanda. I have a question. <laughs> Yes. The bumblebees in one hand, they are damaging the plant leaves. If the leaves are damaged, then how can they perform their photosynthesis at the time of the flowering? Yeah, they, are, they, are, they are actually making tiny holes. I have, I have shown in my last slide the holes they had made. They are making six, six to seven uh, tiny semicircular holes. And that is the signal which overruns the uh, the uh, photo period. That okay. is the signal which overruns the photo period. They are making tiny six to seven holes on the um, plant, and that is the signal for overrunning the photo period. They are kind of by making this signal, they are forcing the plants to flower. A beautiful information, beautiful shown the beautiful information. Thank you very much. Thank you thank very much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir, audible. Hello. Sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bhattacharya, for this wonderful presentation. It was really an enlightening one. And I personally thank Dr. Ashok Kumar Das for sharing this session. Uh, and uh, I now request um, Dr. Uh, Sapan Bhattacharya to uh, take over as a chairperson of the next uh, session. Uh, and uh, we are having a, an immediate lecture by Dr. Ashok Kumar Das. Uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, are you there? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello. Yes, I can. Yes, yes, no problem. Yeah, uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, uh, kindly accept our humble request to chair the session from now on, and we are having a lecture of Dr. Ashok Kumar Das very soon. Uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, the online platform is now yours. Uh, kindly chair the session, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. It's my pleasure, immense pleasure, to chair a session in which uh, I have. Uh, in which we have three three uh, speakers, including uh, earlier session chairperson Ashok Kumar Dash. Uh, the the session will begin with talk of uh, Dr. Dash. Dr. Dash uh, has completed his graduation, post graduation, and PhD from University of Calcutta. He joined the government colleges, West Bengal Education Service, in the year 1987 and served five, five different government colleges for the last 34 years and still serving Bethune College as head of the department. During his 34 years of service, he has published 48 research papers in both national and international journals. He has produced two PhD students, two PhD two students at, uh, obtained PhD uh, under his guidance during his stay at Presidency College. He is attached uh, to attached with PG teaching continuously for the last 28 years without any break. And it is a great achievement for being uh, a teacher of government. He feels that a teacher of the government college gives him a great pride. Uh, he is still performing his research work on uh, different aspects, especially on the antimicrobial activities of angiospermic plants. So the he will deliver a lecture titled "Current Trends in Plant Disease Management." This is a a very important topic 
plant disease management. It is and very dynamic. Uh, it is continuously growing topic. Every day we get new information about uh, plant disease management uh, protocols and plant disease management methods. So let us hear Dr. Ashok Kumar Dash. <clears throat> Uh, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're audible. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Professor Bhattacharya. Uh, um, uh, uh, time is very short, so uh, I am uh, continuing my lectures. The topic is current trends of plant disease management. Uh, a little bit different from the uh, focal theme of international webinar, uh, but I think uh, there is a, a, a relation with the focal theme because uh, most of the uh, previous speakers they have uh, highlighted uh, the uh, medicinal value of the plants. Now we have to uh, maintain uh, the we have to maintain the healthy form of that medicinal plants. If it is uh, infected by any uh, pathogens then how can these medicinal plants will produce the active ingredients. Uh, so uh, in that respect, we can say there is a little bit of uh, relation of my topic with the focal theme of international uh, webinar. The management of plant disease uh, 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 that from the uh, literatures, uh, it has been found there are eight different categories of plant disease management, the physical, regulatory, cultural, chemical, biological, uh, disease resistant varieties, and the last one is integrated disease management. I think the participants who have uh, participated today, they have a good idea about the first uh, uh, five, uh, uh, five uh, methods of uh, uh, disease management. The physical one, uh, you know, is the uh, soil, uh, 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 that is solarization, and then a hot water treatment, uh, then a sanitation of the storehouse. You know, the storehouse sanitation is one of the important aspects so far the disease management is concerned. Because the pathogens who are, which have existed in the storehouse or the go down, they are mainly the uh, species of penicillium, rhizopas, aspergillus. So if you do not maintain, if you do not maintain the hygienic condition of the storehouse, the store drain, uh, may be damaged. Then exclusion, that is, we have to use the pathogen-free seeds. Then eradication, we have to remove the disease host from the, uh, from the uh, cultivated plots. Because, uh, as you know, uh, the, some pathogen, whether it is a fungal pathogen or bacterial pathogen, sometimes they prefer to grow the another host in absence the original one. That we consider them the collateral or alternate host. And generally, they are weeds. So we have to remove this disease plant, whether it is the crop or an alternate one, uh, uh, that is a, a type of management of, of physical method. Then crop rotation is a very simple one. I think it is no need to discuss it over here. Then improved growing condition and radiation therapy. So these are the physical methods of uh, uh, methods of uh, <coughs> management of disease. Fumigation is one of the important thing. Uh, <coughs> uh, we have seen, uh, and we are from the literatures, it has been known that the uh, previous year's plant debris, where the dormant, where the spores are remain found in the dormant conditions. So collection of the previous year's plant debris and burn it to destroy the pathogen is a very important aspect. And the fumes generated from the burning of the previous year's debris, that fumes percolates inside the soil particles and to kill the spores or the mycelial fragments present in that uh, uh, present in the soil. Then the next one is the regulatory control. It is very important, very important. And this regulatory control means quarantine. Uh, uh, nowadays, we are very much accustomed with the word quarantine because of this COVID situation. So similar to this COVID, in this quarantine 
uh, uh, this uh, quarantine measure is also applicable in case of plant disease management because there are so many diseases in our country actually they are not the origin of our country they have come from the other countries uh, as you know that the phytophthora infestans which is responsible for causing a disease the lead bite of potato actually this is the disease which was first originated in the ireland and you know the irish famine then another one is the another one is the what disease of potato caused by syncytium endobioticum so these are the i am citing here two examples so similar to this uh, lead bite of potato and fight of uh, uh, what disease of potato there are so many diseases that come from the other countries because once upon a time we don't had a very good a quarantine measure in our country after independence when we our uh, government when they realized that we have to take the measures immediately then in 60s we uh, our government uh, thought it and they installed the uh, 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 research station both at the point of entry and point of exits because the uh, vegetative stock or the grains or the seeds which are coming from the other countries they must be checked at the point of entry and point of exit after the inspection by the experts at uh, these we uh, uh, the experts will issuing a certificates and after issuing the certificates the grains will be distributed among the farmers and among the peoples so regulatory method is very very important if we maintain the regulatory method properly that we can check so many diseases so many diseases most of the uh, 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 most of the plant diseases uh, which are actually caused by the fungi or bacteria uh, is not the origin of our country they have come from the other countries then next one is the chemical control chemical control you know it was started from the year of 1637 first it was the brine solution then 17 1735 it was arsenic then 1760 it was copper sulfate then 1824 it was sulfur dust then again 1885 it was bordeaux mixture or bordeaux mixture and the discoverer was the millardet after the discovery of the bordeaux mixture it was a revolution so for the management of the plant diseases concern it was a mixture of copper sulfate lime and water and after that in the year of 1891 it was the discovery of the mercury chloride it also and that compound also brought some revolution in controlling the diseases then in 1934 it was the discovery of the broad spectrum chemical component and it was the dithiocarbamate after that in 1970 the discovery of another group of compounds the suffix is zol which Uh, farmers are now using this zol group of compounds meconazole clotrimazole fluconazole etc and thereafter the uh, discovery of the systemic fungicide so the chemical components which are uh, which are uh, one supported times which are new that is the beneficial organisms which are present in the soils these beneficial organisms will be damaged if the chemical fungicides are come in contact with the soil particles environmentally chemical components are uh, environmentally unsafe there is a little bit of phytotoxicity uh, for the application of these chemical components not eco friendly hazardous to grazing animals uh, this is another important aspect 
that after spraying of the chemical components on the surface uh, of the leaves, if any grazing animals come in contact to that crops, to that vegetables, and if they consume it, then these chemical compounds will enter the uh, uh, digestive tract of the animals, and as a result, there will be some damaging effect. Then it is also toxic to insects, fish, and birds. I'm citing here some important chemicals which have uh, uh, which uh, uh, which have uh, 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 some uh, bad effects on human systems. For example, organophosphates and carbamates. These kinds of components. This am I audible? Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Uh, please, continue. please continue. Okay. Okay. So uh, I am citing here some chemical uh, chemical compounds which causes a, a, a tremendous damage to human system. For example, organophosphates and carbamates. Uh, they are responsible for damages to nervous systems, interfering nerve signal transmission, convulsion, difficulty in breathing, some fumigants, burning and itching of eyes and skin, then respiratory tract irritation, then coughing. Then another group of compounds that is organochlorines, it causes tremors or hyper excitation. So, uh, because of the hazardous effects of chemical uh, compounds, whether it is fungicides, whether it is pesticides, bactericides, nematicides, then the alternative uh, uh, measure was introduced. It was the biological control. The previous speaker, uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, he has highlighted. Uh, 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 some uh, important interactions uh, between the different groups of organisms where he has also highlighted the mechanisms of biological control. You know, the biocontrol agents which are available from the fungal sites, it is the best one is Trichoderma viridia and Trichoderma herziana. From the bacterial sites, the best one is Agrobacterium radiobacter K84 strain, then Bacillus thuringiensis, from actinomycetes, the species of uh, streptomyces, and some higher plants are also responsible, uh, act as a biocontrol agent. Their asparagus, crotalaria, etc., they are responsible for uh, reducing the uh, population of nematodes. <clears throat> now, the mechanisms behind this biological control are aminosalism, competition, predation, parasitism, nematophagy, mycophagy, cross protection, etc. Et I am highlighting here the nematophagy because nematodes uh, uh, you know the nematodes they are the plant attacking nematodes are special from the animal and human attacking nematodes and because of their speciality this plant attacking nematodes are generally called eel worms uh, so for the uh, number of so for the categories of pathogens are concerned uh, whether it is fungi, bacteria, virus, nematode, algae, whatever it, molecules, whatever it may be, nematodes are the first position. So for the damaging of the crops are concerned. So uh, it is very difficult to control the nematodes because to control the nematodes, if we apply the nematocytes and these nematocytes, if come in contact the soil particles that I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, that it will damage the beneficial organisms. Then scientists, they uh, try to find out the alternative. Then they found that the, some fungi are responsible to kill the nematodes. As the fungi, the, uh, are, uh, fungi eat the nematodes, that's why the term is nematophagy. These fungi are actually, uh, uh, they are actually, uh, the examples of the fungi, Trichoderma, Monacrosporium, etc., etc., belong to the uh, class Deuteromycetes, they actually form some trap in the form of some network or in the form of some knob or a uh, 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 ring. When the nematodes come in contact with this trap, then they are entangled. Then the mycelium, they push their hypha within the elementary canal of the nematode by piercing their uh, exoskeleton and inside their elementary canal the nematode, uh, the, this mycelial hyphae uh, produce their branches and in this way the nematodes are damaged. So the many research workers are, are, are performing the research towards 
or uh, to find uh, to uh, to find out the new and new species of this nematophagus fungi which is also called the predaceous fungi so these are the biological control and the organisms which i have mentioned that is trichoderma viridi trichoderma hersianum then agrobacterium radiovector k84 strands these biological organisms now are are very much used in the uh, in industry for the production of the uh, uh, biocontrol product that is commercial product i am citing here some examples of that commercial products which are available in the market and farmers and experts and researchers are using these commercial products uh, 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 for controlling the plant disease galtrol is one of the important important such product produced by the agrobacterium radiovector k84 strain dagger g is another product produced by the pseudomonas fluorescens and the next one is the bioderma h is a product produced by the trichoderma viridi then binaft is another product produced by the trichoderma hersiana so these are all very important uh, commercial products now available uh, 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 from this uh, 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 from the production of this uh, uh, this product uh, uh, by exploiting the biological uh, organisms now we, uh, now we can realize that now uh, the workers are emphasizing their research towards on uh, on the controlling of plant disease by using the biocontrol agents now now these the uh, starting from the physical to biocontrol these are the uh, i am um, these are the uh, from the literature it is revealed that these are the these are the old methods and uh, it was started uh, uh, 50 or 60 or more than 100 years back but scientists those who are emphasizing this are research towards uh, <coughs> so for the management of the plant pathogen is concerned they are emphasizing to uh, find out on the discovery of the disease resistant varieties once upon a time the discovery of the disease resistant varieties was restricted on the transfer of pollen grains or uh, collected from the uh, resistant plant and transfer to uh, <coughs> uh, another plants to get the resistant variety but uh, uh, after the uh, after um, <coughs> the discovery of so many bio, um, bio uh, biotechnological techniques now the uh, uh, resistant varieties uh, uh, of the transgenic uh, plants transgenic plant lines has come out and it is uh, so many strategies uh, are nowadays followed uh, to uh, for the production of these transgenic plants i think the participants who are uh, present today they have a good idea how to or what strategies are generally followed to get a uh, resistant varieties of plant uh, 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 transgenic plants now scientists are emphasizing the research work on this aspect uh, uh, <coughs> not only that uh, the uh, other aspects uh, the other current aspect of plant disease management is the uh, the production of uh, the uh, production of the uh, i mean the, uh, the exploitation of exploitation of the pr protein exploitation of the Uh, uh, the resistant gene that the resistant gene which is actually responsible to make the plant resistant this resistant gene are actually responsible for the production of some protein some production of phenolic compounds production of phytoalexin etc etc the the current one is the production of the uh, 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 pr protein that is pathogenesis related protein the research is going on uh, for uh, uh, on for the discovery of this pathogenesis related protein i am citing here some of the protein which are nowadays very much uh, used uh, 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 for the uh, production of the uh, transgenic plants this is uh, disease resistant transgenic plants they are chitinage glucanage etc etc i uh, you know the chief component of the fungal cell wall is chitin so if this gene which is responsible for the production of the chitinase if the chitinase is there then this chitinase which act on the chitin so the fungi fungal pathogen will not be able uh, uh, to uh, to survive so uh, similar to chitin uh, chitinase another pr protein is glucanase this glucanase is uh, is the another uh, component of the fungal cell wall 
so uh, production of the pr protein is the current concept uh, so for the uh, uh, so for the new varieties of transgenic production uh, production of new uh, digestion transgenic uh, plant is concerned uh, 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 then come to the next point is the integrated disease management so uh, this uh, earlier the methods which are actually followed for controlling the disease uh, it was the uh, it was the single handled uh, uh, control method if it is the physical one then experts they emphasize on the physical one if it is the chemical one emphasize on the chemical control if it is the biological one emphasize on the biological control but if it is a concept of the integrated disease management then it is the combination of a number of practices because integrated it will cover a <coughs> number of other measures uh, this uh, the main goals of integrated disease management main goals are the, to eliminate the initial inoculum to reduce the effectiveness of initial uh, inoculum uh, to increase the resistance of the host uh, delay the onset of the disease slow the secondary cycles new modes of action concern related to uh, the uh, uh, particle uh, 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 residue the new technologies to control the evolution of resistance in pathogens then next one is the evaluation of new biological control agents then uh, modern molecular tools then adoption of remote sensing tools for accurate and systemic surveillance of the pathogen and then smart sprayers so if we consider all these things at a time then it is uh, then it will be a better measure to control the uh, 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 control the plant disease uh, in compared to the single handedly uh, method of control uh, 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 so uh, scientists are now emphasizing on the management of idm uh, integrated disease management uh, uh, so it will actually the combination of the regulatory control cultural control chemical control host resistance biological control and physical control uh, uh, if all these things are uh, are uh, are applied uh, uh, with uh, 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 with, the, with, uh, with their respective parts then the disease can be managed so uh, uh, this is all about my lecture uh, though i have uh, done uh, uh, one of my phd research scholars uh, she has done uh, her research works on the antimicrobial uh, property of two angiospermic plants one is plumeria acutifolia another one is uh, uh, bacopa monieri uh, and some dissertation work has been uh, conducted uh, many of my students uh, they uh, they are uh, actually the lichen uh, uh, the specimen lichen was chosen uh, to find out the antimicrobial property uh, so uh, i have little bit of idea about the biological control but here because of the shortage of time i am not highlighting uh, uh, my research uh, 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 article here so with this uh, a few words i am uh, finishing my lecture thank you all professor vatacharya Am I audible? Hello. Hello. Uh, you are audible, but Professor Vatacharya is possibly not audible. Uh, he need to unmute himself, I think. So, yeah, Professor can, uh, uh, so uh, you can uh, uh, chair the session. Hello, Professor. One minute, sir. Hello, Professor Vatacharya. Kindly unmute yourself. Okay. There is a question uh, from. Uh, uh, am, I, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Yes, 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 sir. 
as I was talking, that Dr. Dash has taken us for a ride through the plant pathology, plant disease management from the very initiation to the modern times. Uh, it is a very long journey uh, in a very uh, short period, within a very short period, in a nutshell, he tried to present the present different aspects starting from the very beginning. Uh, so the session is now open for uh, questions. Uh, if anybody is in, uh, if anybody wants to put some questions, yes, there is a question. What is your opinion about Pustilago? Pustilago, uh, you know the uh, it is the pathogen which is responsible to cause the disease of mage, uh, Ustilago, mages, and G also. Uh, uh, I have not done uh, any work on the Ustilago, but uh, uh, it's uh, a fungal pathogens uh, uh, responsible for causing disease, smart disease. Uh, 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 any other, uh, what uh, uh, aspects you want to know from the Ustilago? Sir, uh, good afternoon, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Sorry, I am audible, sir. Yes, sir, yes, my sir. question was that, sir, recently the UP East, some of the districts, uh, sir, our area is a rural floodplain, as uh, and uh, sir, this Asian virus false mud has been drastically um, uh, reduced the yield of rice, and uh, the dust produced by it has been reported by the farmers in is choking. And sir, my question is uh, for you that, uh, sir, what will the mitigation can be taken by the farmer and local to tackle this situation in future? Uh, that is the only question I have. As I mentioned you earlier, that eradication. Eradication, yes, sir, eradication. is one of the important aspects. So whenever mm -hmm. there is a disease, whether it's on the crop or the uh, 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 weeds, we have to remove that disease plants. There is no other alternative because if you spray some chemicals, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that chemical there will be some effects on the other system, whether in the environmental systems. Uh, so it is better to use, uh, better to eradicate the disease plant from the crop field. This is my sir. But sir, Otherwise, it is the, uh, sir, very uh, big task, big task, sir, because sir, it is uh, all throughout the field, sir all throughout the field and sir it has infested almost the all crops all over the uh, these localized area in then we have the, the next alternative is crop rotation that i mentioned in crop rotation is the ideal uh, measures because crop rotation can shift uh -huh. the disease yes. there are so yes. many examples of crop rotations mm -hmm. thank you next uh, next any any other question the the problem for uh, B burning debris is, uh, yes, is yes, yes. one of the one of the huge hazards for uh, for environment. So that is we have to look for other alternatives also. Burning debris is causing huge uh, environmental hazard to uh, areas, yes, particularly yes, it causes pollution uh, in the surrounding areas, yes, particularly Delhi, Haryana, ah. etc. Et so uh, actually, at the time of harvesting. The spores or the mycelial fragments, which uh, uh, which are uh, generally uh, uh, found in the uh, leaf, leaf litter or in, uh, 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 found in the soil. Uh, so, uh, if you spray some chemicals to kill the uh, spores present in the soil or debris, mm -hmm. then there will be some side yes, effects sir. of the chemicals. Mm -hmm. So, burning yes, burning uh, is uh, causing some pollutions uh, uh, to uh, mm -hmm. to create some fumes. Uh, that will percolate within the soil particles. Uh, uh, though there is a creation of pollution in the surrounding areas, you have, shown that. You have rightly pointed burning, out. Burning, <laughs> burning also adds ash to the soil. It has benefits. It has yes, benef yes, yes. benefits. But, but, but management of <laughs> burning has to be managed. It, it, is, it has to be a managed burning. Exactly. It has yes. to be a managed burning. Yes, sir, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. Any, anybody else? Sir, anybody else? Well, sir. Sir, if you allow me, sir, I want to show the image, uh, sir. Yes. If you, sir, can I show it? Yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, okay, sir, sir, I am presenting it, sir.
सर एज यू कैन सी सर आर यू एबल टू सी इट सर नो 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 सर आर यू नॉट एबल टू सी इट नो सर वेट सर वेट सर वेट सर Sir, now. Okay. Okay. Now we can see it. Yes. 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 Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, sir. Sir, as you can see, sir, as you can see that, sir, it is very, very means, uh, and sir, in the second image, sir, as you can see that these uh, spores been uh, fallen on the uh, barren soil, and uh, there it can live up to one year. It can live up to one year, and in uh, next uh, season, sir, it will. Yes. 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 and sir this is sir now sir uh, sir i am talking about this dust this dust is been very injurious and very means choking for the uh, localized farmers hmm uh sir if uh, if this particular yes. is specific to that particular host then i think crop rotation is the ideal one it, it, why why yes, why sir, yes sir is this and the virus has been has been isolated from this infected seeds uh, as the virus been isolated it is still still lag not virus still lag oh this this is still lag fungus ah is still lag acha you are talking about some viruses viral this is no you are talking about still lag okay. yes sir yes still land in virens acha okay. sir that's only sir i want to sir share 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 to you all sir Mm. Oh, time is very short. The next speaker is waiting. I think. Uh, <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir, for hearing my concern. Okay, okay. Thank, uh, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, we'll move over to our next speaker. Uh, before that, I want to thank Dr. Dash Ashok Kumar Dash again. for this uh, wonder this wonderful presentation and <clears throat> for the lively discussion we had uh, also for a very brief period of time because we do not have much time at our disposal uh, i'll uh, go to thank you, thank you, thank you very much. i'll go to dr sayed benazir firdaus yes dr yes. Are you here? Yes. Yes, I am very much there, sir. Can you see my screen? Yes. Look at look at it, Dosh. She is presently the head of the Department of Physiology, uh, Government Degree College, Kharagpur Two, Pashchim Medipur. She has joined WBES West Bengal Education Service uh, on June 2015. Uh, After completing PhD in physiology, a uh, human physiology that is, you did your PhD in human physiology. Physiology from University of Calcutta on March 2015. She was awarded University Junior Research Fellowship on 2011. Oh, after after completing PhD, she joined WBES. Okay, she was awarded University Junior Fellowship. On 2015, an international tra travel grant for paper presentation at South Asian Association of Physiologists Conference Three at Colombo, Sri Lanka, on November 2012. <clears throat> She is a life member of Indian Science Congress Association, Pashim Mongo Bigan Moncho, and Physiological Society of India. Her research work was accepted for presentation. at <clears throat> food bioactives and health conference at norwich uk on 2016 uh, she did her short term research training on mass spectrometry mass spectrometry analysis for post translational protein modification upon their interaction with quinones <clears throat> and its relevance in cancer and her topic will be okay uh, related ca cancer related to multi drug resistance from <coughs> laboratory of mass spectrometry department of physiology pharmacognosy university of sherbrooke quebec canada presently she is working with this, the same laboratory on uh, same project in collaboration with her college 
She has organized international seminars, acted as a resource person, person has 25 international publications to her credit. She has done certificate course in science communication from Indian Science News Association. And she is actively engaged in popularizing science in vernacular, a popular initiative of Poshim Mongo Vigyan Mancho, as well as INSA Kolkata. She, her topic of her talk uh, will be gastroprotective action of Muraya Konegi, antioxidant activity in NSID induced gastric oxidative stress. So it is an interesting topic uh, before um, uh, going into the before going into the discussion. Uh, any further discussion? I'll request uh, Dr. Fidos to begin our lecture. Okay. Thank you. Uh, actually, I'm facing some problem in sharing my screen. Uh, if some technical help can be provided to me. Can you see my screen? Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, your screen can't, is not visible. Uh, Mr. Abhishek, can you help uh, Dr. Fitos uh, for uh, the uh, screen sharing? Mr. Abhishek, are you there? Because I think someone has to allow me to uh, share. Like uh, you will get that option, madam, at the bottom of the screen. I have uh, clicked on the option. And once you click on that option, present now, then there will be a window open. Uh, it will ask you whether you want to share your entire screen, a window or a tab. So you need to click on your entire screen. Have you got that option? Yes. Okay. Then click on your entire screen and then it will further open a window where you need to click on the screen and click on okay. now, share. Now can, now can you see? Uh, not yet. No, no. Have you clicked on share? Yes, can you see no? No, not yet. Not yet? No. Uh, Once you click uh, your entire screen, then it will further open a new window. Okay, okay just give me a sec. Sure. Can you see yes, now? Yes, yes, now. Now it is now coming. Go to the right presentation mode. Go, go to slideshow. Your microphone. I face some problem with my uh, thing, with my laptop. So from here, let's see if I can manage. Okay. Okay, just give me a second. Sure. I would request others to put their microphones off, please. Please, one sec. Just give me one sec. I think now we can see the screen. Yes, ma'am. We are able to see the visible, screen. Visible, ma visible, ma'am. Visible, ma'am. I'm very sorry for the inconvenience uh, cause. Thank you, Professor Bhattacharya, for your kind introduction. Uh,
Today, I'll be delivering a lecture on gastroprotective actions of Murai Koenigi, its antioxidant activity in NSAID induced gastric oxidative stress. I have carried out this work as a part of my PhD program. Uh, although I'm a physiologist, I have a strong association with the work with phy phytochemicals and antioxidant from the plants for the last uh, 10 years, and I'm still continuing with the same. So, uh, uh, my next uh, slide is, uh, I'd like to introduce with the NSAID that I have chosen for this experiment. It's a uh, pyroxicum, which is a popular NSAID. Often it is uh, prescribed uh, to the patients who suffer from chronic arthritic pain. Uh, here you can see, in, the, in this slide you can see, I have shown the, uh, how the gastro, uh, gastric lining, it suffers from stress. There are the protective factors and the aggressive factors which uh, lead to gastric uh, damage. When there's an imbalance between the protective and the aggressive factors, then the gastromucosal lining is often damaged. And as you can clearly see from this, uh, uh, from this uh, slide, that NSAIDs often lead to gastric, gastromucosal damage. Now, my next slide is where I have uh, shown the anti-ulcer agents, which are popular drugs of choice presently. Uh, these are the uh, agents which help in gastric acid secretion, like the H2 antihistamines, which include the cimetidine, ranitidine, pamutidine, etc. We know we are often, uh, we are quite accustomed with this, like popping up a ranitidine or a rantac in the morning. There are the popular PPIs or the proton pump inhibitors, omeprazole, lansoprazole, etc. The anticholinergics also, the pyrazepine, the propylene, and the prostaglandin analogs like the misoprostol, etc. We are also quite accustomed with the use of antacids like uh, what we take as gelucil. Often these are the sodium bicarbonate, sodium citrate, the systemic analogs and the non-systemic ones also, the magnesium hydroxide, magnesium tricinicates. Ulcer protectives are there, ulcer healing drugs are there. And when the ulcers are caused due to bacterial infection, the anti-H pyloric drugs are also in use. But why these drugs are losing their popularity? Because they render some deleterious effects. As you can see from here, there are adverse effects like headache, dizziness, bowel upset. But these are mild effects. There are more grave effects like simetidine can cause gynecomastia, galactoria. As it is seen, it is anti-androgenic and it increases prolactin level. It is also reported that interaction of these drugs inhibits the CYP450 enzymes, which leads to inhibition of the metabolism of many drugs which ultimately leads to drug toxicity like theophylline, warfarin, phenytoin, quinidine, etc. There are also some reports that prolonged use of these drugs lead to some renal impairment, impairment and hepatic failure as well. Bladders are often affected in patients when used for a long time. My uh, next slide uh, here, so we can well uh, understand why I chose Muraya Koenigi. Muraya Koenigi is a popular spice herb which is used in Sri Lanka and, the Indian, and in the Indian subcontinent in various dishes and it is often uh, consumed as a food, uh, as a food uh, component. So we focused on Muraya Koenigi and we tried to keep it uh, to the traditional uh, practice like uh, consuming it in an aqueous solution for uh, our work. Here I have so shown the systematic classification of Muraya Koenigi. The species that I use belongs to the family Rutaceae, Muraya Koenigi, uh, L. Spring. And this has been identified by the Botanical Survey of India, and we have collected the leaves from the plants we found in the Purva Bordhaman district of uh, West Bengal. Here you can see. Also, I have shown a map of India where uh, I have uh, shown where the, the distribution of this Muraya Koenigi plant. Uh, in this slide, I have elaborated the health benefits of Muraya Koenigi, which have been already which have been earlier reported, 
like its anti-inflammatory actions, its analgesic actions, its radioprotective actions, its chemoprotective actions, its anti-lipid peroxidative actions, its hypocholesterolic actions, memory enhancing activities, anti-diabetic actions, antioxidative actions, and cardioprotective actions. And so the present study, the present study aimed at studying the effectiveness of an aqueous curry leaf extract. I have already mentioned that I chose to use the curry leaf extract in the aqueous form, complying to the traditional method we use, like dissolving things in uh, water or using an aqueous solution to consume the herbal medicines. Now, why Muraya Kwenigi? Here, I'll tell you that there has been reports that Muraya Kwenigi leaves can be tolerated even at a dose of 9,000 9, milligram per kg body weight, and they do not impose any toxic effect. These uh, studies were mainly carried out in spread down in rats and mice. So, Muraya Kwenigi is safe, negligible, with no side effects. And it's economic and can be consumed in regular diet, do not impose any health risk, even when consumed for a long period of time. And it grows easily in this South Asian region. I'll share the experimental design in this slide where I have taken four groups of animals. There was a control group, there was an aqueous curry leaf extract fed group, and a pyroxicum treated group, and an aqueous curry leaf extract pre treated pyroxicum fed group. I have chosen a dose of 30 milligram per kg body weight for pyroxicum and 100 milligram per kg body weight dose for the curry leaf extract. All these animals were sacrificed after four hours and the tissue samples were collected for biochemical analysis and histological study. These are the materials and methods that I have used in my study. I have determined the ulcer index following uh, Bondopadha et al reference 2000 uh, and the biochemical analysis were carried out following these particular references. There was also histopathological study done on the gastric tissue sections collected from the sacrificed animals. I'll share some of my results. You can well see from the panel out here, I have shown the dose dependent effect of the curry leaf extract on pyroxicum treated rats and it is seeing that uh, curry leaf extract protected the gastric tissue in a dose dependent manner. Ulcer index uh, considerably was found to be low when curry leaf extract uh, was applied at a dose of 100 milligram per kg body weight and almost there was no ulcer spot found when it was used at a dose of 200 milligram per kg body weight. This is the histopathological or the histochemistry that I have done. I have done uh, hematoxylin staining and pass staining of the gastric tissue. And you can well see that in pyroxicum treated rats, this uh, gastromucosal lining is damaged. Whereas when curry leaf extract uh, was treated at 100 milligram per kg body weight dose, there was no damage of the gastromucosal lining. This is the picrocyrus uh, staining sections of the gastric tissue. Uh, here you can also see that collagen was not damaged when curry leaf extract pretreatment was done. These are the biomarkers of oxidative stress. Lipid peroxidation level was near control when curry leaf extract pretreatment was done. Protein carbonyl content was also uh, near control when curry leaf extract pretreatment was done. Whereas when pyroxicum was uh, given singly to the animals, the animals showed a uh, change in the biomarkers of oxidative stress and they were significantly elevated. This, uh, this slide also shows few of the biomarkers of oxidative stress, the reduced glutathione content and the total sulfide drill estimation was also done. And all these results corroborate to my earlier findings. These are the changes in the activities of the antioxidant enzymes. I would like to specifically focus on the GPO or the gastric peroxidase enzyme. This gastric peroxidase enzyme, as you can see, it is the key antioxidant enzyme for the gastric tissue. And any alteration in this gastric peroxidase activity leads to gastromucosal damage and subsequent ulceration, oxidative stress-mediated gastric ulceration. 
so when pyroxicum treatment was done to the uh, animals like when pyroxicum was given to them uh, singly then we can see that gastric peroxidase activity significantly decreased whereas when curry leaf extract pre treatment was done to the pyroxicum fed group uh, it was almost near control or it was restored to control similar uh, changes in activities we observed in case of copper zinc sod mnsod and catalase activity uh, we found that pyroxicum treatment uh, elevated the activities of the uh, copper zinc sod and mnsod as well as gastric catalase but when uh, curry leaf extract pre treatment was done the the activities of this enzyme was restored to control values gastric uh, ulceration is often uh, referred to be caused by the free radical uh, free hydroxyl radical it is of uh, there are many reports as well as we have reported there are also many publications from our group where we have seen that on nsaid treatment this hydroxyl radical gets enhanced significantly similarly we in this study also we found that hydroxyl radical uh, level or tighter enhanced significantly but when curry leaf extract pre treatment was done then gas, uh, there was almost uh, the level of this hydroxyl radical was almost near control uh, the superoxide anion radical estimation also we have done we have done it indirectly uh, estimating the activities of the xanthin oxidase and the xanthin uh, dehydrogenase enzymes and there also we have found that curry leaf extract provided protection this slide shows the change in the status of the mitochondrial krebs cycle enzymes uh, pdh estimation was done isocitrate dehydrogenase estimation was done alpha ketoglutarate estimation was done and succinate dehydrogenase estimation was done and in every case we found that curry leaf extract at a dose of 100 mg per kg body weight provided protection so to summarize all our findings Uh, we propose this mo uh, model or this schematic diagram where we have shown that pyroxicum it uh, acts via the cyclooxygenase one pathway where it uh, has an impact on the gastro friendly prostaglandin e2 it significantly decreases the level of the prostaglandin e2 and we found that when this prostaglandin e2 significantly decreased in the gastric tissue this led to generation of free hydroxyl radical our proposition was that that aqueous curry leaf extract directly scavenged this free hydroxyl radical and protected the gastric mucosa so to uh, summarize and conclude i like to say that the aqueous curry leaf extract which is rich in antioxidants like polyphenols flavonoids and alkaloids Uh, has a great impact on uh, NSAID caused uh, gastric ulceration and pyroxicum induced gastric ulceration is brought about by free hydroxyl radical generation in in vivo antioxidants in aqueous curry leaf extract can possibly scavenge the hydroxyl radical generated thereof so the future uh, scope that was uh, that came out from this study was that aqueous curry leaf extract can be used either as a co-therapeutic or it can be used in patients who are undergoing nsaid treatment for long term i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to my mentors devashish bandopadhyay and kuldeep jana under whose supervision i completed this work i would like to specially thank my officer in charge dr parthu sharathi singo for constantly encouraging me and uh, giving me all sort of help and support to continue with my research work i would also like to thank my colleague and my friend dr devoshri ghosh who has been a constant support and who has encouraged me all throughout she has done a part of this work along with me i would also like to thank the organizing committee of iwwop 2020 ggdc mohanpur for giving me this platform These are some of the references that I have used in my present work. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, nice presentation <clears throat> and very interesting one. <clears throat>
Muraya Konegi is uh, widely used, uh, has tremendous beneficial potential. We all know, uh, even uh, the uh, the ethnobotanical uh, knowledge or ethnobotanical concept on Muraya Konegi um, is uh, valued. Uh, whether it is whether uh, it is uh, whether the people are from villages or from the cities. <clears throat> and irrespective of the caste, creed, religion, respect to the area, locality, it is in many, from uh, the tip of the India to right at the uh, Chennai, Kanyakumari, everywhere, Amuraya um, Konegi is valid. So the session is open for discussion. <clears throat> Anybody who wishes to ask a question, please proceed. Any questions? <clears throat> okay. If there is there is no question, uh, then as the session is coming to an end, we shall go into the le le next lecture uh, without waiting for question any further we'll go into the next lecture thank you for those again thank you, thank you sir hmm. now we we will be listening to obishek chakraborty obishek chakraborty young and promising scholar presently assistant professor department of zoology a government general degree college of mohanpur this very college which, organize, which is organizing this seminar. He will deliver a talk titled Review on Ecological Hotspot of Indian Biodiversity in Indian Biodiversity Context, its degradation and management concerning the fate of endangered species. This is very important talk uh, from the ecological and environmental perspective. So I'll request Obishek to proceed. <clears throat> Sir, I, am, am I audible? You are audible, but you are not, we cannot see you. <laughs> Sir, my presentation. Yes, uh, yes, now it's all right. Me? All right, yes. All, all right, can I talk from now? Yes, proceed, yes. yes. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, thank you with the, all the uh, my all my previous speaker and organizing committee of this wonderful uh, webinar on behalf of the Mohanpur Government College. I again congratulate all the uh, speaker previously and particular person resource persons associated with it. My topic is on the review of the ecological hotspot related to the. Indian biodiversity context. Now, as we all know, the biodiversity hotspot is a particularly demographic region with significant level of species under threat. And it is one of the important context regarding the conservation and maintaining plant animal wealth and association all in a particular country. We all know Ernest Meyer, famous scientist, recognized 25 hotspot and recently nine now added making its number to the 35 now there are certain criteria where a particular region considered to be a biodiversity hotspot those are the number of species or species diversity degree of the particular endemism threat to the habitat and degree of the exploitation the threat and exploitation are particularly important regarding the hotspot criteria because it's particularly the most resourceful ecosystem, resourceful community or plant animal assemblage for a particular country and yet it is a subjected to the degradation because it is, it is generally 
the more scariest scariest one it is more valuable one joto jinish ta dami hoy toto tar mullo bare so these are the list of the hotspot global globally and now india is a one of the mega diversity country a remarkably diverse with 1.2 billion people and 1.65 to language dialects etc the demographic diversity has pros and cons the threat is excessive from the human population and but the best part is the human diversity believes in the custom and tradition and making plant and some animal like tulsi like elephant as a sacred and its protection generally there are three unparalleled factor making india its biological importance astro founding spectrum of habitat and ecosystem existing over a wide range of latitude and longitude india lies in the confluence of the three global center origin of life biodiversity realms in the malayan eurasian and afro tropical and it has a legacy of coexistence of the human and nature and a long standing tradition of conservation these are the particularly diagrams of the biodiversity hotspot on india they are generally four associated with some other countries among them the first one is the himalayas the particularly eastern and western himalayas both indo burma associated with the particularly meghalaya assam tripura nagaland sundaland it is a part of the borneo and malayan ecosystem and only the nicobar island and some part of the andaman included in it and western ghat and sri lanka again sri lanka it's outside of the indian territory now coming to the himalayan hotspot it is a particularly a enriched area of the biodiversity with more than 7.5 km square and housing 10000 of plant species 300 mammals 19700 bird and 105 amphibians and 170 reptile and 2070 freshwater fishes among them 3100 endemic plant species that is not found anywhere else except the the foot jungle foothills of the himalayas these are the vital signs and the species diversity and endemism of the india and this show a very good association of the particular enrichment of the biodiversity which is under extreme threat it is divided into the particularly eastern and western western himalaya kumayun garhwal north of kashmir in uh, northern pakistan and eastern himalaya nepal bhutan northeastern indian states west west bengal sikkim assam and arunachal pradesh the western himalaya is a particularly biogeographical region which has a enriched socio cultural diversity food is in the southern region extend up to the snow clad peak its contents on ganga jumuna sharada major river system these are the maps of the western himalaya and the important criteria if we making in a nut cell it is a it is a very rich in its biodiversity and representing a particularly very threatened taxa it have a particularly various types of life supporting values regarding to the biodiversity including pollination climate regulation nutrient cycling soil fertility maintenance hydrological regulation soil form formation and soil function etc it also has a some uniqueness and also a very rich cultural diversity and biodiversity linkage over 201 and 200 plant species are used for the various purpose directly linked with the cultural belief system and have played a major role in controlling over exploitation on the other hand the particular western himalaya is a asian lands of contrast it has a wealth of culture and faiths of different religions these are the particularly uh, eastern himalayas eastern himalayas a third of the plants and reptiles are endemic and 40% of all amphibians the world northernmost tropical rainforest can be found in the particular eastern himalaya the plant life arunachal pradesh among the most diverse people and wildlife form here a rich mosaic of life stretching across a remarkable and unparalleled landscape 
because this region at the site of the biogeographic crossroad of the two continental plates it contains incredible wealth and diversity the indo malayan realm in the lowlands and of the eastern himalaya home for the asian elephants clouded clouded leopards wild water buffalo gaur hornbills etc also included four global 200 eco regions critical landscape of international biological importance these are the particularly list of the floral species 7500 flowering plants 700 orchids 58 bamboo species 64 citrus species and 28 conifer 500 mosses 700 ferns and 78 lichens nearly 50% of total flowering plants recorded are from the northeastern region it is according to a scientist taktajan it is a cradle of flowering plants generally particularly 98% of the particularly genus rhododendron it is particularly confined to the eastern himalaya beth amra je take boli commonly known as a cane another species of significance most important non timber product there are many types of insectivorous plants which is particular nepenthes cassina which is endemic to the meghalaya regarding that of the particularly faunal diversity it is also enriched of the different types of mammals birds reptiles and amphibians and 28 endemic mammals are recorded and distributing among 14 eco region it is also enriched with different types of birds but the particularly and also the toad or amphibian species but the particular information regarding the uh, faunal species below that of the vertebrates is relatively scarce yes these are the particularly uh, diagram and description of the different component i mean uh, life life biodiversity presents in the eastern himalayas now come to the threats those are the belongs to the climate changes encroachment due to the by the local and the people from the outside exploitation of forest huge population pressures floods mining wood charcoal production from the cutting woods waste disposal and also various unrest political reasons and most importantly poaching is one of the major threats especially endangered species like tiger elephant rhino etc and infrastructure development creation of numerous dam without due to environmental creation of the dam without due to environmental impact assessment could lead to the submergence of arable lands and biodiversity hotspot forest and grassland fire and lack of information as a result of which we need to conserve this particular uh, vulnerable yet important most of the indian important hotspots for that national mission on the himalaya studies sanction 52 demand driven action uh, there are so many uh, there are mountain biodiversity database assessment of the ecosystem health and harassness potential promoting recovery of the sensitive species upscaling of the outreach to, uh, through conservation education so on these are the particularly uh, list of the conservation measure establishment long term diversity long term environmental ecological monitoring population and habitat assessment etc etc development of the site assess the distribution and abundance of the commercially important medicinal and aromatic plant obtain robust measure of the species diversity generate a special distribution abundance database and map land ownership pattern in the areas improving adaptive capability of the community and local governance by enhancing resilience of the community as well as ecosystem so we need a serious uh, conservation measure and have to come at once in order to protect this particular hotspot now come to the next one which is not totally included within the indian territory only a portion of mizoram is and particularly associated meghalaya is form in it that is indo burma hotspot cover more than 23 23 lakh like kilometer square area these are the vital sign of that particular hotspots plant diversity 13500 species of that 7000 endemic endemism goes to the 51.9 along with the difference mammalian 433 122 600 birds reptiles 522 species characterized the different seasonal weather pattern north northern winter month dry cool winds blow from the stable continent asian high pressure wide diversity of ecosystem represented in this particular hotspot this is particularly enriched with that of the particular lakes 
पवन एंड थोड़ा ऑफ द वाइड एरे ऑफ द ऑर्किड एंड जिंजर स्पीसीज ऑर्किड डाइवर्सिटी इज अ मैक्सिम हियर 54% of amphibians 39% of reptile mammal species are endemic to that particular area 20% face water turtle species 10% of the world face water species live in the particular indo burma area these are the particular orchid species some of the orchid species of taxonomic importance these are the famous tiger one on rhino threats including hunting and trade of the wildlife agro industrial plantations hydro power drum construction agricultural encroachment infrastructure logging so particularly threats included habitat loss food many species risk including the endemic medicinal plant and trees so we need to conserve here also most of the countries declare at least in principle controlling deforestation government of vietnam for example trying to slow or halt deforestations in 2007 five year investment of 9.6 million was approved by the critical ecosystem partnership fund to help conserve this area within this region the third one that is the western ghat and sri lankan hotspot which is are uh, related to that of the uh, shahadri range it is one of the biodiversity hotspot in india along with the particular sri lanka span over 1.6 lakh kilometer square running parallel to the western coast line almost 77% creature of the land and water and 62% of the reptile species found here discovered no place here it mediates the rainfall regime of the peninsular india by intercepting the southwestern monsoon winds the wide variation of rainfall pattern western ghat coupled with the region's complex geography home of over 5000 species of the flowering plant 139 mammal 58 bird species 179 amphibian species these are the vital signs and species diversity and endemism of that particular area it is a housing of the particular endemism 140 mammals 260 reptiles 510 birds and 180 amphibian species flora minimum of 6000 vascular plant western ghat and sri lanka hotspot more than 3052% are endemic 5000 plant of vascular species belonging to the particularly 2200 genera and about 107000 species among this particular some of the group are the dipterocarpus of 13 species endemic and calamus with 20 to 25 species the particularly endemics plant diversity and endemism sri lanka are also quite high plant diversity in western ghat correlated with seasonality with higher level of alpha diversity towards the north mountain cloud forests locally called saula and grassland ecosystem are found in the higher elevation of the western ghat and sri lanka these are the pictures of the saula aquatic plant one total of 608 species are identified these are the endemic species of the medicinal plants in the four states karnataka tamil nadu kerala and maharashtra bryophyte diversity also enormous endemism happier to uh, appear to be higher in the western ghat ranges that lies south to the pal ghat gap agasthamalai hill is the extreme south the harbor highest level of plant diversity and endemism 87% are endemic these are the opening of the silent valley national park fauna uh, particularly largest number of known species birds followed by the fish reptiles mammals and amphibians nilgiri martin and lion tail macaw fishes generally it is uh, that are scanty a species richness of 34 345 uh, species 280 species have been recorded 118 are endemic with high degree of precipitation moderate climate high diversity of forest abundance of the aquatic life these are the some new species recently found amphibians the most highest level of endemism among the vertebrate in the western ghat and sri lanka hotspot and every year we found one or two amphibians and reptile species there family ranidae has the highest number of species followed by the racoferidae spectacular new species purple frog has been discovered in reptile diversity 225 and 120 species are recorded in the western ghat and sri lanka 12 sri lanka species are all endemic these are the amphibian endemics 
and in 2018 the scientists discovered two lizard species these are the some lizards from western ghats birds species richness as endemism as a maximum mammals 137 species of mammals largest representation of the order chiroptera rodentia and insectivora of that particular 137 to 137 fourteen are endemic relatively need known at the distribution and concentration status of small mammals particularly small carnivores and rodents these are the molluscans 77 species of freshwater molluscans 27 endemic insects global hotspot insect 30 336 species of butterfly 43 species of bugs and many more unknown insects hotspot for the particularly biodiversity two third uh, among insects 243 species of butterfly have been recorded western ghana and sri lanka and 20% of the animal biomass new spectacular species of and extraordinary jumping and and a recent species anokitas delideus dragonfly and damselfly odonate fauna of the western ghat included 223 species of the two suborders among 52% of the species belonging to the suborder endemic more endemicity among the damselfly although the proportion might locally vary due to the habitat heterogeneity now regarding to the proximate threat of that particular biodiversity area there will be livestock grazing protected area high density of the livestock causing serious problem and infection illegal hunting driven by the tradition of the wild meat pervasive across the winter western ghat hunters employ gran as well as wide array of the inguinous traditional method conflict with the large wild life extraction of the forest product fuel wood and fodder extraction plantation hill agro ecosystem of the western ghat dominated by the tea coffee rubber monoculture of various species 750 square kilometer of the tea plantation above an elevation of the 1500 meters human settlement pollution public behavior and atti uh, attitude legal and illegal logging so government have decided to develop western ghats ecology expert panel in 2011 under the guidance of the famous ecologist madhav gadgil declare western ghat as a ecological sensitive area 1 2 and 3 high priority almost all developmental activity restricted on it no new dams should be based on the large scale storage to be permitted in the esz1 and there will be a bottom to top approach rather than to the top to bottom approach for conservation monitoring in 2012 kosturi rangan committee instead of total area of western ghat only 37% of total area is brought under esa complete ban on mining quarrying and sand mining in the esa current mining area should be phased within the next 5 years no thermal project will be allowed and hydropower project to be allowed only after detailed studies so it is a development versus conservation debates and politicization of the issue will not given any fruitful result and holistic view of the threats and demands on the forest land product service devising strategy to address these with clearly stated objective for the authorities involvement must be taken the national green tribunal has restrained six western ghat states from giving environmental clearance to activity that may adversely impact to particular adversely impact the eco sensitive area of the mountain range the panel further directed not to reduce the extent of the eco sensitive zone of the western ghat these are the some conservation procedure 
Now come to the fourth one, that is the Sundaland hotspot. Only Andaman and uh, only part of the Andaman Nicobar Island uh, is belonging to the is within that particular hotspot. It's covered about 15 lakh kilometer square, more than 25,000 species of the plants, and particularly 380, 770, 450, 245, 950 species of the mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibian, and freshwater species they are found. These are the vital signs of that particular hotspot and species diversity and endemism. Border is sea hotspot, Indo Burma hotspot, northwest, and here taken in the Tongar Platini line, which across the Thailand Malaysia border. These are the geographical, these are the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. These are known as the Bay Island, typical tropical ecosystem, tropical rainforest bordered by the mangrove swamps. These are the checklist of flora of the Andaman and Nicobar. 2,662 plant taxa, 2,519 species, 13 subspecies, 104 variety and 6 forma under 1,100 genera and particular 238 families. Angiosperm are the predominant plant group in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Around 11% of the total angiosperm area island covered with the mangrove. The island contribute nearly 0.25% total eco-rich area of the Indian subcontinent. These are the checklist of the particularly data taken from the JDSI fauna. Birds, it is an endemic bird area of the world. A total of 293 species of the bird had been reported so far from the Andaman and Nicobar and a wide range of the particular butterfly diversity. Great Nicobar Island, 27 genera, 32 species and 4 variety of the imported orchids. The marine life surrounding also contribute diversity of the flora of the biosphere reserve. Many species of algae, seagrass, and mangroves. These are the some flora of the particular great Nicobar. Endemic mammal, Andaman wild pig, and other mammals like crab eating macaw, palm civet, fruit bats, squirrel, rats, blue whales, and dewdongs. Many blood species are there. Nicobar parakeets are confined to that of the Nicobar. Island, white bellied sea eagle, common parakeets, etc. So, habitat destruction, huge pressure from the wild, rapidly increasing population, global climatic change, habitat fragmentation, pollution, over exploitation, and disease are the some threat. So far, 2007 ESRO predicting models so forest cover 2305 kilometers of the uh, northeastern of the um, India and Andaman Nicobar Island disappear by the 2000. 25. So some conservation measure, future strategy, biodiversity, adopted, fundamental shift in the developmental planning, empower local community to participate in the decision, proper forest management on sound environmental principle, environmental friendly agricultural strategy, strict legal sanctioning, creating awareness among the Icelander on the hazards, hazards of biodiversity laws, human resource development. Now a paper coming about the future of endemic flora on biodiversity hotspot in India, it suggested that the endemic flora will be adversely impacted. The future dis distribution is predicted as shift in the northern and northeastern direction in Himalaya, indo burma while southern and southeastern direction of the western globe due to a cruder climatic condition in this region. The future distribution observed observe a significant shift and the reduction. Model predicts that the 23.99% range reduction and a 7.70 range expansion in the future distribution by 2050 and 41.3% range reduction. So protection of the biodiversity in the India is so far on the hands of the local community till dates. But the pollution, deforestation and other urbanization and industrialization, these people have the little or no control. The biodiversity of India coincides with the other protected area like Reserve National Park. Conservation in the hotspot promotes sustainable management of these essential natural resources and supports economic growth, which also reduced drives of violent conflict. Some global organization, Conservation International, Worldwide Fund, Nature Alliance, Alliance for Zero Extinction, Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund have implemented efforts to conserve different biodiversity hotspots. 
most importantly the purpose of the biodiversity hotspot not to simply identify region that are high biodiversity value but also prioritizing conservation spending these biodiversity hotspot are rich area across the world housing a plethora of fauna and flora hence saving and conserving biodiversity hotspot absolute necessary in february 22 india became the president of conservation on migratory species 13th conference of the parties the ministry announced the marine turtle policy and marine standing policy for the marine diversity biodiversity hotspot are administered by the ministry of environment so in a, if we going to the conclude our particular part that is our cultural identity is deeply related with the biological environment plants animals are the symbol of our indian heritage we should inspire from just looking at the natural beauty and power so there is a need also need of the systematic reporting and documentation of the conservation project as well as inclusion of the pressure and the response to study designing of the ecological experiment without proper documentation conservation is not possible ultimate decision maker of the individual citizen small choices make add up a large impact because personal consumption drives development which in turn uses and pollutes nature biodiversity regarding the particular india and also all context is a most important heritage conserving hotspot obviously necessary but all together with a particular taking hotspot it in our cell we should look into the go better picture taking india as a whole to sustain in biodiversity and maintaining our wealth for the future generation these are the some reference thank you <clears throat> thank you abhishek <clears throat> uh, uh the, the there was a question what what is the what is the uh, i lost the question over here what, what was the uh, ground level initiatives for mitigating this problem that was a question Uh, uh, okay sir ground level regarding the particularly generally the people that is surrounding the particular zone in the buffer area of this particular rich biodiversity there are so many national parks uh, sanctuaries etc within this particular biodiversity region the people are particularly associated with the buffering region has to directly involved with conservation but the particular political pressure and exploitation is so high level that we do not mane particularly uh, capable of their full involvement we need to uh, particular involve the local communities for taking care of their own environment yes conservation is after all for the people what is the role of locals and stakeholders next question is what is the Hey, uh, Obishek, could, could you please uh, 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 go off this uh, screen sharing mode and show? Yes. The question was, what was the role of the locals? You have already answered it. In locals. anyway, uh, locals. Hmm. The locals generally, uh, all they are particularly are uh, uh, you know the Bhumi Putros of the particular areas. Eh? So actually, they are generally uh, taking something from the environment and also returning something of the environment. Without them, we cannot actually conserve because conservation is nowadays in the community level, not on the particular species or ecosystem level. There is a hmm. man. environment plant animal etc total association yes for a long time the conservation our conservation approach was was conservation uh, for for the more for the uh, flora and fauna rather than uh, for the people people were forgotten for a long time uh, but without involving them without uh, making that is also oh. happening in the sundarbon sir Sundar, yeah. once we try to conserve the crocodile, we try to conserve tiger, we try mm. to conserve uh, the particularly, but without the people associated there, mm. 
but so if you... if a conservation approach forgets people then uh, the the consequences are dire um bad for consequences can be worse for both the animals flora and fauna and the people so that that uh, approach has to be changed but uh, unfortunately not only in india all over the world we are seeing uh, that the uh, people are gradually being marginalized uh, so uh, particularly in amazon uh, many many tribes are uh, are due, due to for mining and other uh, activities the current brazil government has opened amazon uh, to industrialists and uh, the uh, tribes the communities who live there very much dependent on forest they are gradually getting marginalized same is here i have heard that uh, there is there is strong opposition till now uh, in uh, harvesting ma uh, minerals from uh, the pench and uh, other adjoining and areas of karnataka there is strong lobbying for mining activity to be allowed it's, till now it is it is uh, prevented but do not know how long it can be uh, prevented so in that case people who are dependent on forest will be will be dependent on mining will be working on the mines and ultimately uh, they take care of the forest they get resources but they also take care of the forests they take care of flora and fauna okay <clears throat> any other question if if there is no question uh, i'll i'll declare this session closed the next session will follow so in this session we have our three uh, lectures uh, very informative uh, first professor dash had talked about different uh, approaches different current uh, plant protection methods second in the second we have heard about uh, the effect of murai konigi importance of murai konigi in uh, in gastrointestinal protection and third obishek has discussed in detail about uh, the bioconservation the conservation approaches the biodiversity hotspots the problems they are facing and the methods uh, the approaches that can be taken to protect them so with this and we again thanking the uh, mohanpur college um, iqac and uh, author and uh, uh, organizing committee secretary principal i declare this session closed thank you professor bhattacharya uh, for being kind enough to chair the session and being with us for some quite some time uh, you have been a guiding force uh, all through the session and also we, um, thank you for the wonderful lecture before this before the, your being the chairperson i once again thank you and i we will hope that we would be also with you associated in days to come in online or offline platform whatever may be so uh, as of now the session gets closed as uh, stated by professor bhattacharya we will once again meet uh, sharply at 3 o'clock and in 3 o'clock we are having some uh, interesting presentation by two more resource persons and followed by a session of oral presentation and uh, where some research scholars and a few faculty members will be there to present their work and um, i also let you know that um, we have just arranged in order to motivate the research scholars particularly uh, the, there are six research scholars who will be participating in the um, oral presentation in order to motivate them we have arranged a uh, best oral presentation uh, uh, prog program so uh, we would pick up the one of the best presenter uh, among the six and uh, hopefully we um, uh, i request all of you to join in the uh, next sessions and uh, make this event successful thank you so i sign off for now thank you professor bhatia thank, thank you all thank you thank you thank you thank you all the participants so we are meeting at 3 o'clock thank you so much thank you sir